planning schemes for social economic development of Ghana. This is to be presented by Planner Maxwell and Ponsa. Ladies and gentlemen, as the director of SOBI says, I will also stand on existing protocols to do presentation on behalf of LUSPA, uh, our acting CEO in the person of Mr. Kodio Yebua. I hope some of you know him very well for the regional base of Bono region. Uh, first of all, the theme for the seminar or the conference is very appropriate because the planners and the surveyors, we are more or less twins on the ground. And as the director also we indicated earlier, the surveyors are the first to be on the ground and also the last to leave the ground before any development with regard to spatial development commences. Thank you very much on that. Uh, based on the theme, please can you go to the next slide? Yes, my outline of the presentation is what is a local plan as the earlier presenter did. In fact, there has been a paradigm shift from layout planning schemes to local plan preparation. And before a local plan can be prepared, we apply what we call the three-tier planning system, which is the SDF, the structure plan, and then we come to the bottom, which is the local plan. So the theme for this conference is centered on the last bottom of the plan preparation process, which is the local plan. That's where we do the demarcations of land which is very specific for particular development. So what is the local plan? And then steps involved, opportunities that the local plan presents for socioeconomic development, the challenges that are embedded in the preparation of local plans, and then recommendations, conclusions. First of all, a local plan is a dimensionally accurate, digitized layout plan for development within a particular spatial area. It is digitized because there has been a paradigm shift from manual ways of doing things to a digitized way of preparing the local plans by using our software called developments and then the QGs in the preparation of the local plan. Next one. So the local plan translates the overall vision of an area into reality. First of all, if you want to design a particular area for development, the earlier presenter make, made mention of other land uses within a particular layout area. And these are the things it considers, the plot sizes, use of each plot of a land within the local plan area to be residential, commercial, industrial, mixed uses. Mixed uses, that's the situation whereby we have certain portions of the property being used for commercial and others being used for maybe residential or other uses. Types of buildings to be constructed on each plot in relation to density and height zoning. That's, there are certain places that we zone as maybe high class residential area, low class, and then the medium class, and then the height zoning, the level that you can go with in regards to going vertical. And then streets and property addresses plot for proper urban management. It means that the local plan also aims at making navigation within the local plan area easier. That is why we, the vice president has initiated this pr process of digitizing the whole Ghana and getting database on streets and naming for Ghana digitization process. And then public rights of ways in terms of road networks and all the accesses that are needed to ease movement within the local plan area. What are the steps involved? The earlier presenter didn't avail himself of questions because we, when we were there, we were mimicking about some of the issues because if you go through the rigorous process of preparing the local plan, some of these anomalies, if not eradicated, will be at least minimized. So the steps involved. First of all, who prepares the local plan? Now, per the Act 925, that the Land Use and Special Planning Act, it is the assemblies, the development authorities that prepares the local plan, that's the MMDs in the country, and then it, it be done through the Special Planning Committee, of which 
the Soviet mapping division and the lands commission are integral part of that committee at the district level. Certified land use planning consultant who is contracted by the MMDE. Consultancy in the planning arena can also do local plans for approval. But here, the caveat is that you can't do it and approve it on your own. It has to be presented to the special planning committee for vetting by the technical subcommittee before final approval by the special planning committee. Landowners can also go into the process, estate developers, any other interested party. Where the assembly has also the local plan preparation, the contract will be subject to procurement law led by the fiscal planning department. It means that all these processes will be scrutinized by the fiscal planning department, which is the secretariat to the special planning committee that finally approves the plan. Next slide. Then the local plan is a, it should be it should be looked at as a program. You see, so the program involves the assembly prepares a program for the its implementation. Like we have two types of plans at the assembly level. We have the medium term plans, which shows the policy policy dimension of the assembly, and then the spatial aspect that is the local plan preparation. So it should be looked at as a program. And then challenges and then the possi uh, possibilities of getting it done. Level of ambition for the local plan. It means that there should be a vision. What does the local plan intends to do? Is it to provide housing units for people? Is it to provide other alternative land uses for people living within the neighborhood? So there should be a vision. It means that the local plan shouldn't be looked at as the document that was presented by the earlier presenter. But there should be a policy document or a report accompanying the vision of the local plan as a document. Planning processes, work plan, and then timelines. There should be a process or a, an action plan prepared by the secretariat, itemizing all the activities that are supposed to be done, ranging from uh, reconnaissance OV, preparation of uh, base maps, and then drafting stage, vetting, and all those processes. All those things should be planned in systematic manner. The use of consultant, as indicated, it is allowed to use the consultant to do the work, but it should be approved by the special planning committee, which is a mandated, mandated authority within the assembly to approve all the plans. Then there should be a budget. It should be looked at, the preparation of the local plan should be looked at as a project. So there should be a budget component so that all the activities that are supposed to be undertaken will be costed and then uh, funds devoted for that purpose. Then the local plan management team, this is the economic development officer. Here, the development planning officer is supposed to be part of this team because he's already a member of the technical committee. As indicated earlier, the medium term plans manifest itself because all the projects that the assembly intends implementing will manifest itself in space, of, of which the local plan is one of the means by which these policies, decisions will be translated on the ground. Fiscal planning officer, who is the secretariat of the special planning committee, will also be a member. One person from the technical committee would to be the surveyor. Because the surveyor, without a surveyor, we can't prepare any meaningful local plan. My earlier presenter was talking about topo sheet. In fact, there has been a paradigm shift of using to, topo sheet by using maybe drones to fly and then get the images and also other means, satellite images and other online services, open street maps and other sources so that we can integrate all these data sets to get a comprehensive base map for the preparation. And that is what the surveyor is supposed to do at that level so that we can get a meaningful lookup plan that will spearhead development for us. And then one key departmental and then agency has deemed necessary, Ghana Health Service, NADMU, and all other relevant stakeholders who are members of the committee. Use of appropriate geospatial applications and expertise. Developments, which is the land use planning and management information system, out of which we have the map maker, which we have been using in the implementation of street naming and property addressing system across the country, of which Ghana Post GPS is leveraging on to digitize the whole country for us so that we can navigate around town without much technicalities or challenges. Experts in geospatial information management that the surveyors are supposed to give us all the geospatial data that are needed for the area that the, the local plan is supposed to be 
prepare satellite and aerial photos from the area to be planned. We need all this information, which is online, which can help us to maybe cross-examine, because the surveyor information alone is not sufficient, but we need to, based on the software that I made mention of the map maker, we can zoom the surveyor output within the satellite image or uh, Google search, and then locate the actual positioning of the information the surveyor has presented to the planner to be used as a base map for the situation of the local plan. Other stuff for mapping and detailing maps, as well as color combinations for various uses. There are conventional colors that we use for residential and other alternative uses of land. We will apply all these technicalities. At the inception of the process, notice should be given to all of the agencies who will be involved, outlining the program of work, main consultation times, and other milestones, as will be indicated within the work plan for the preparation of the local plan. Step two, data collection. Base map, we need base map, which automatically should be presented by the surveyors, and then demographics, Ghana Saska service, to give us information as to the number of people we are planning for, so that based on that, we can vision out the number of plots or make projections, realistic projections of the number of people that will be staying within the plan area, and then the number of plots that will come out of that. Education, health, traffic analysis, open spaces, income levels, and other information that will be necessary. Where do we get all this information from? MMDA department agencies, local property and land owners, food surveys, which automatically will be done by the surveyor to give us existing situation on the ground, based on which the local plan will be prepared to avoid any interference that may come after the implementation of the local plan. Then there's step three, development of proposal, review of such a plan. Normally, when we are preparing the local plan, there should be a proper <coughs> location of the local plan within the such a plan. For instance, where we are, maybe Sunyane sector 17 or sector 18, but on the such a plan, we should be able to locate where actually the Sector 18 of Sunyane municipality is located so that we can plot it accurately. So the surveyor base map will be plotted on the structure plan to make sure that it doesn't conflict, the local plan preparation doesn't conflict with the vision of the structure plan as well as the spatial development framework of the municipality. Review of maps to identify. We will review all the maps that we have in place. For instance, if there have been cadastrals that have been prepared within the area that we are preparing the local plan, there is the need for us to consult the file for planning comments so that we will obtain all the necessary data to be plotted within the area so that the surveyor's base map will be accurate for the preparation of the local plan. Analysis of problems, needs, and the dynamics to be considered. What are the needs of the local plan? What are the problems on the ground? With consultation with the traditional rulers and other relevant stakeholders, we'll be able to obtain information that will be relevant for us to prepare the local plan without facing my challenges. Then the format issues to be discussed, must that be addressed or affected issues? It means that what format are we going to use? What are the dimensions of the plots that we envisage within the area? We are we going by 70 by 80, 80 by 90? All those things will be considered with regards to population density and other relevant data that will inform the dimensions of the plot. Site visitation, there is a need to always visit the site to make sure that what we are doing, especially the topography of the area and then the slopes, so that you, the road network will be aligned in conformity with the existing natural architecture. The use of planning standards and zoning regulation. There is a document for planners that the planning standards for maybe school size, police station size, clinic, and other land use tools that will inform us as to the dimensions, but not on your discretionary, maybe, issues. Now let's make this one 80 by this or 100 by but There is a planning standard that will inform the dimension of other land uses that will be earmarked within the planning area for the local plan. Then use of use population coverage analysis. It means that we have to look at the Ghana statistical information, Ghana statistical service, demographic information as to the number of people that we are planning for 
so that we will know the number of plots that we will earmark to avoid backlog and then the scrambling for land. Drafting the overall layout of the plan. This is a work of the fiscal planning office. That's what we have been trained to do. So the planner at the initial stage will draft the local plan using all the skills that he has and then the software that are available in our office, which uh, is QGIS, which is an open source, and then the map maker software, then we use it to draft the local plan based on the planning standards and the documentation that will inform the location of facilities and other things, and then we come out with a draft. First, that of the local plan report. Means that there should be, after you have drafted the plan on paper, there should be a draft report accompanying the local plan. For instance, how many plots are within the planning area, residential plots? How many clinics? How many police stations? How many worship sites? All these should be captured within the report. And then the relevant landowner that you are dealing with, because after allocations have been made, people will come, somebody from outside will come and say that when they did the allocation, I wasn't here, and the court issues and all those things. Then the family heads and all the traditional authorities will be captured within the report to maybe as a backup to the information that you are working on. And then first draft proposal for further discussion. It means that this is a proposal, that's the planner's proposal, which is subject to further discussion by the technical subcommittee and other consultations that will be done within the community. Nowadays, you're supposed to hold two public consultations before the final plan is approved. Next. So that launches us onto the consultation stage. Now you are planning for the people. So there is a need for you to integrate, integrate the people in the whole process, get them involved. And we are practicing participatory planning so that the people will buy in, into the process. So you, you organize town hall meetings to in, involve key stakeholders, civil society organizations, youth leaders, and traditional owners so that they will bring their ideas on board so that you incorporate all those ideas, so that when you locate a facility at a place, people will patronize it. You, you maybe locate a market at a wrong place, and later the assembly approves it and then build the market, and then people are not, the market women are not patronizing. So there is a need for you to involve all these st stakeholders about the location of the facility, so that when it is constructed, the patronage will be high, and then the necessary benefits will come, so that we will achieve the socioeconomic development that we aim to get. So the tools for the participation are sample surveys, public notices, newsletters and flyers, public hearings, and at times you go on radio to announce your intention of doing the local plan, and at that stage, you also come to the ground to involve the people and get their views, conferences, seminars, and then workshops. So stages of the consultation, awareness creation, and that will be automatically done on the media. You have to go to the radio to announce to the general public that this area has been identified as a potential area for the creation of local plan, so that people who are doing things that, are, that will be long or permanent, they will desist from it, so that it will reduce the tragedy in maybe updating the, look, uh, this in the base map for the planning of the work. And then alerting and inviting key agencies and stakeholders, town hall meetings, conferences, Presentation of that plan, report, strategic environmental assessment. This is where EPA has a crucial role to play. Because any fiscal development has impact on the environment. So if there are water bodies there, EPA will advise as to the necessary buffer zone to EMAG. And then most of the times we make reference to the repairing buffer zone policy, which will give you the dimensions if it is a river, 300 feet on both sides of the river, if it is a stream, 50 meters away on both sides of the stream, so that we will make sure that the environmental aspect as indicated in sustainable goals will be accomplished. Implementation, monitoring and evaluation, final plan, report, presentation. The implementation most of the times will be done by the surveyor. Because there have been cases whereby fiscal planning officers have me metamorphosed themselves into surveyors on the ground, and this is a reality. After doing the plan, then he himself will use compass and other things to go and do demarcation on the ground, of which is a, a, an affront to the constitution of Ghana. Because we have not been trained as surveyors, we have been trained as planners. So the implementation will be done by the surveyor by demarcating the individual plots and then submitting a resurvey plan for correction and then the necessary process will follow. 
next slide. Step four, how consultation is carried out. Identify who needs to be consulted. It's not everybody that will be involved in the whole process. For instance, if you're doing the local plan here, why do you go and bring people from maybe Piapri or other areas? It will be for the affected relevant stakeholders who have a stake in the plan that we are preparing. Not everybody will be involved. And then design consultative programs. The consultation program, you need to organize it well by which means. Are you going to do it physically with them or the assembly will be doing town hall, you are waiting until the town hall meeting, which is maybe organized twice in a year. And then we need the plan to be implemented earlier. So there should be other alternative means to mobilize the people together so that you can inform them about the intention of the plan so that they will all, their ideas will be brought on board and when the plan is implemented, they will all participate in it. Public notices, advantage areas, make use of other information systems of the assembly, especially the information services department, which are advanced with horns on it. You blew out the jingles to inform the people that this is the intention of the assembly to prepare a plan within that area. Have discussion options and issues. Record comments and contributions. Use questionnaire if necessary. Allow attendants opportunity to evaluate the process. Let them bring their ideas on board so that all those ideas will be incorporated in the planning process so that when you are implementing it, their involvement will be solicited. A detailed report of comments and issues discussed. All these fora that will be organized, there should be minutes or reports on it as a basis of backing the processes of getting the layout done. Step five, that's selecting a preferred option final draft proposal, deliberation on con consultation report, deciding on first draft of the proposal, and then input of SPC, that's the special planning committee, just posing draft lookup and on the structure plan and SDF. This is very necessary. Some people think that the lookup plan is final in itself. It's not final. It's subjected to other bigger plans, which is the SDF. The SDF is the special expression of the socioeconomic and environmental policies of the assembly. We need to know whether the assembly has a plan where we are doing the local plan, there is a railway line or there is another land use that is conflicting with what we are doing on the ground. So the first plan to consult is the SDF, the starter plan, no, the uh, special development framework of the assembly, and then you come to the starter plan. The such a plan shows the broader land uses within the area. So you make sure that the vision of the such a plan and then the SDF, the special development framework, doesn't conflict with the vision of the local plan. So that after implementation, you'll be called to make corrections to, for them to conform to the other two hierarchy plans. So that, that should be done at the right place. Then revising the principles that guided the plan preparation and its precedence. It means that there should be an underlying principles the underlying principles are safety, economy, harmony, and then environmental. These are the planning principles that should inform all the preparation of all local plans to make sure that the safety aspect of the plan is being considered, the environmental aspect is being considered, and then the economic aspect is being considered. When all these things, ideas are, or principles are incorporated in the process of the local plan preparation, then the vision of getting socioeconomic development within the area will be accomplished. Review of draft plan by relevant stakeholders and agencies. Nowadays, it's supposed to be pasted, the draft plan is supposed to be pasted at vantage point for all the community members to pass their comments on them so that it can be presented to the technical committee for vetting and then subsequent approval by the special planning committee. Strategic environmental assessment and environmental impact analysis. As indicated earlier, we need to do environmental impact analysis of the plan. And all these documents will be prepared by EPA and then it will be integral part of the plan report accompanying the local plan preparation. So there will be consultations on environmental issues. What are the nature architecture within the area, water bodies within the area, and then the necessary applications of rules of the game applied to make sure that conservation is considered and then ecosystem and everything is maintained within the plan area. Next slide.
management and then financing, listening and programming of action, implementation of the local plan steps to follow, identify cost intensive investment sites and services. Here, when you start the implementation, it shouldn't be done as if the demarcation is the end. Site and services is also very crucial. There is the need for the assembly or the traditional rulers that are spearheading the implementation of the local plan to mobilize resources to open up the place. First of all, the rules, then electricity, water, and all the other utility services so that when people acquire plots within the area, accessibility becomes easy and construction conforms to the plan. So the demarcation shouldn't be the end. And then uh, bundle linked to proposal. Identify spacing mechanism of the plan. Are we going to do it on the wholesale? The block system that we are used to, block A, block B, or we are doing holistic implementation of the whole uh, local plan. That will be informed by the demands for plus and other things so that strategic implementation will be done to conform to the needs of the developers. Identify management structure for the plan and then identify areas of potential for capital investment. If an investor wants to maybe undertake an investment within the area, are we making maybe consideration for all those things so that they can appropriately invest, employ the people within the area, and then achieve the socioeconomic development that we aim to get? Then evaluation, monitoring and evaluation. There is the need for us to monitor and evaluate the plan. At the implementation stage, that's where the monitoring occurs, to make sure that the surveyor does the right thing, then submit the resurvey plan, and then the evaluation will be conducted to make sure that the impact of which the local plan was prepared has been achieved. Has it opened up the place for development? Is there utility services, accessibility easy? All those considerations will be made, and then it will be used to improve, improve the implementation of other subsequent local plans that will be prepared within the municipality. Next. Evaluation. I have already uh, explained that, so let's go to the next. Then the adoption stage of the plan. How do we adopt the local plan? Local plan shouldn't be looked as a document in an individual pocket. It should be a public document. And nowadays, for the Land Use and Special Plan Act, Act 925 of 2016, there should be a, a public data room for the local plan to be easily assessed by anybody who wants to assess the local plan for a purpose that is relevant to the area in question. So, first of all, it will be approved by the Special Planning Committee after the technical subcommittee of which the surveyor or lands commission is an integral part of that committee to make sure that the plan has been approved by the assembly. But the same act also recommends that the local plan goes to the regional special planning committee for gazetting and publication in the newspapers of Ghana. So after the local plan has been approved at the assembly, that doesn't end the adoption process it has to be forwarded to the Regional Special Committee for gazetting and publication in the newspapers of Ghana. Next. Then opportunities. After we have successfully exhausted all these processes, what are the opportunities that the local plan presents to us? First of all, it's easy accessibility. Movement and navigation within the plan area becomes easy because the road hierarchy ranging from 200 feet to 30 feet has been considered so that if traffic is moving around or vehicle is moving around, there will be no further interference with the movement of these facilities. And then increase efficiency in the use of land. Increase efficiency in the sense that the dimensions of the plots have been properly calculated to make sure that each of them has been positioned at the right place to commensurate for the use of which it has been designated. Reducing urban sprawl, urban sprawl and haphazard development, which doesn't help, because the drainage system, if it is translated, it breeds other environmental issues, mosquitoes and other things. So when it is done, it helps to avoid urban 
haphazard development and storage. Corridor development and then the height zonings. Areas that have been maybe zoned for three-story burden, then you don't go and bring self-contained to mar the beauty of the area. High zoning will be considered to make sure that the requisite uh, investment is done at the right place. Environmental sustainability. Make sure that all the environmental issues have been captured as per the report of the EIA, which will be done by the Environmental Protection Agency of Ghana. Mixed uses, residential combination with commercial and others will be considered. And then diversity. Make sure that all the other land, relevant land issues have been captured, ranging from commercial to uh, clinics, what have you. All those things will be considered to make sure that we achieve the vision of socioeconomic development. Challenges. In spite of all these opportunities that the local plan gives us, those of us in the land sector and then the developers arena, there are challenges. Activities of park surveyors. It is worrisome that most of the traditional rulers liaise with park surveyors because they go there to present themselves that their services are cheaper. If the <laughs> recognized surveyor is charging 300 per plot, he is charging 30 cities for a plot. And they are cool to go with them. And that is hampering the activities of smooth implementation of local plans within the areas of the assembly. And then weak enforcement of the building regulations. Whenever somebody is developing within these areas because of politicization and other issues, cracking the whip on the, 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 the deviant becomes an issue. And we, the planners and surveyors, doesn't have that power to demolish the such, unless maybe the management of the assembly, of which they are not ready to support us in that direction. Cost of base mass preparation. In fact, at times, when the surveyors come out with their bill for the preparation of the uh, base maps, it becomes scary. And you know, the traditional rulers, unless maybe the layout is prepared for them to sell some of their plot, pre financing some of these activities becomes a challenge. That is where we find ourselves now. So the surveyors will also help us in this direction by uh, uh, providing the necessary inputs that we need to prepare our work. Delays in the approval of the local plan. If a development cannot delay, if somebody has resources and wants to develop and then the process is taking us about one year, Look at inflation, we did, even when we entered Judicia, from January to this time, inflation has been so high, and developers will try to do the little that they have, invest it on the ground, and that will go contrary to the vision of the local plan. Recommendations. There should be a rigorous effort to embark on sensitization and publicity programs to make sure that People will get the relevant documents before they commence development so that we can achieve the vision in the local plan. Strengthen planning and building inspectorate unit of the assembly to make sure that people who are developing without permit or people who are flouting the building regulations are brought into book. Adoption of geospatial technologies to reduce the cost of base maps. In fact, there are other alternatives. We have open street maps, building footprints, on OSM, open street maps. You see, when those technologies, satellite images, nowadays, can get a CGIZ, we have drones, which we can fly within the area. And when this exercise was implemented within the region, I involved the Soviet mapping division of the region to be trained in the use to uh, fly, uh, flying the drone, so that when we fly the drone to capture the images, we can digitize this and get our base maps at a reduced cost so that we can spearhead the processes of the local plan preparation at a reduced cost so that the cost of the base map will be drastically reduced to pave the way for preparation of local plans. Facilitation of the process to avoid unnecessary delays. This blade comes to our office. Our officers at times, some of them, uh, they are being a bit bureaucratic and that is married the beauty of the whole exercise. In fact, we should facilitate it as public officers so that within even three months, we'll be able to prepare the local plans for implementation so that Developers will comply with this for us to achieve the vision of socioeconomic development. Conclusion. Local plans focuses on sustainable land management as postulated by Sustainable Development Goal 11, which places emphasis on making cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Since local plans cannot be considered in isolation without reference to structure plan and then the spatial development framework, there is the need to build coordinated approach 
in accomplishing the vision indicated in the local plan to create this university. Thank you very much for your time. We thank you so much for this powerful presentation. Um, yes, um, I will ask that you, together with the first presenter, please come up. Uh, we'll have um, about 10 minutes of questioning, after which we'll break and come back. But um, I think both of them are presenting problems to us. And the next session, I'm sure we'll have a solution and the way forward. Let me see by hand, I think about five questions. Wow. Okay, so Savia Tinedu, question number one. So we call on the Lands Commission for the first question, followed by FIG. Thank you very much. Um, next year, to make sure that we are the least sponsor so that we can get. Mine is not a question, it's just a, a comment. Um, I have read on so many platforms uh, a judgment by a court that says that some places, including where Sarah Labi focused on, no longer belong to Central Region, but they are now in Geta Accra. And our surveyors are saying, where is the, the plan of the area? Because judgment relating to land must come with a plan prepared by one of you here and certified by the director of survey or his, his representative. So we are all waiting for that. And for that reason, some of us have uh, refrained from commenting on um, what the public are, are, are saying. But if that is the case, then it will open the Pandora's box for all other parts of the country to come up with all sorts of historical facts where an area should belong to region A or region B. I think that from our, our point currently, we want to focus on the administrative way of doing things. Traditional authorities can decide that they, they, for their own jurisdiction, they belong to this place or that place. And so that is uh, our position. Now on, on, the, on the, some of the slides that show that, oh, a parcel uh, on paper lies here or on the layout, but when you go on the ground, it's on this side. I think that we should not throw our hands in the air. We as surveyors and professionals should lead the process. The parcel, because it didn't start with a base map, and that is why we have all those challenges. Because if you have a base map, even if there's a distortion, distortion, it will still fall within the boundaries of that base map and we can adjust it. But if we have a situation where a parcel um, on the ground differs from what is on paper. Sometimes it has even been registered and you're doing a transfer and they say it doesn't fall there. What has happened in other jurisdictions is that they create a link between what is wrong and what is right. So you can go historically to say that, oh, this parcel that was lying here today, this is where it lies. And so we can solve it using our professional knowledge. Um, that, that will be my comment and uh, I wish you all the best in the, in the following hours as we exit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Executive Secretary, for the question. Yeah, Savia Tinedu. I think you have the mic. Mike, yeah, okay, sir. Please, once you have the mic, I think you can. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, um, mine is also not a question. And uh, just to add a little... Uh, fun to uh, the last speaker. Land has no leg and cannot walk. So even that historical linkage, uh, we need to find a way of doing it. Uh, my, my comment is uh, uh, to the planner. Do the assemblies have the special development plans? Uh, how will they meet? Don't worry yourself if you don't have the answer for the second one. And uh, you also know that predominantly we're dealing with stools, skins, families, and individual lands. Do you make any conscious effort to demand boundary plans in view of the passage of Act 1036 
and loops, the Lupsa Act. Uh, do you make conscious effort to demand those boundary plans in order that you avoid scenarios where uh, a quarter percent or a quarter of a particular parcel is for Mr. A or stool A and then a third for stool B and a third for the other stool. Uh, do you go through that regular, rigorous uh, checkups? And finally, when you talk about consultation, how do you nominate those who must necessarily attend the meetings when we are aware that the population of land surveyors in many of the MMDAs uh, is largely um, not sufficient, uh, significantly not sufficient. And sometimes you have one officer crisscrossing several districts. How is that impacting on you? And uh, the final hey, one is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the final one is um, <coughs> two plus two. The final one is, um, you made a comment about uh, most of the time, the layout must be implemented by surveyors. And uh, I just wanted to see if we cannot replace the most of the time with all of the time, so that uh, all the time, the layout is implemented by surveyors, instead of most of the time, so that there is no other time when somebody else is implementing it. Thank you very much. All right, so um, senior vice, Somebody please help me with the microphone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, mine is a, a series of just observations, and I think that uh, from what I, I mean, came to uh, when I joined in, from what I had he heard. It looks like you gave us quite a very good rigorous uh, criteria for the development of the local plan, right from the uh, structure, I mean, the special development framework down to the structure plan, to the local plan. And you actually very well articulated all the processes that we have to go. But I will have wanted some sort of practical experience sharing in terms of exactly what has been your experience with its implementation. For example, how do we do the funding? Even though you touched on it, how practically do we do the funding for the preparation of a local plan? Who pays for it? Does the assembly consciously think about this in, and incorporate it into its annual budget? How much is the cost of a local plan in a particular area that you have looked at? And when we look at the challenges of preparing a local plan, what are the real issues? What are the political dimensions? What are some of the traditional influences? What are some of the special interest groups within the areas that really impact on the preparation of the, uh, uh, of the plan? And when we are talking about collaboration and cooperation between Land Use and Special Planning Authority, Lands Commission, e EPA, and the rest, what really takes place? What time frame? And how is really the cooperation? Is there a lot of infighting? Is there a lot of uh, sabotaging and that sort of thing? We need to understand these dynamics to be able to see and then come out as professionals, as to what is the best way to help with our national development effort. Thank you. We take the last question from for the session, um, for this first uh, session from Dr. Akwaji, and then uh, they will answer, and then we'll come back for more questions. All right. Thank so you very much. Um, I have a very simple question. It's on planning comments. What do you consider when you are asked to provide planning comments. Do you consider the surveyor's filled report as one of the things that make you take your decision? Thank you very much. All right. So um, now you can respond to the various questions and then we take the next set of questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start from the bottom. That's the planning comments. 
Normally, when Lands Commission is requesting for planning comments, they write a letter. There should be a correspondent to that effect. And then they attach the cadastra or the interest to be registered to the document. And then the planner repo, uh, responds to it appropriately. For instance, if it is within a planning area, then he will indicate the sector plan and all those particulars to it. But if it is an unplanned area, then he will know how to also respond to it so that all the future plans that will be prepared. Because in the presentation, I made plans of the consultation of the file for planning comments so that you identify all the interests that have been registered so that you incorporate them into the local plan to make sure that you don't provide a completing use as has been registered by Lands Commission already. And also on the issue of practicalizing the theory that I have presented. If Asunyane uh, has been an, a, an area which is dominant by, dominated by vested lands, vested lands. So when it happens that way, then Lands Commission plays a major role in the preparation of the local plans by financing it. Unfortunately, the assembly rule, because as I indicated, it is the special planning committee which is being chaired by the DCE or the political head within the assembly. So automatically, it should be a baby of the assemblies. But most of the times, they finance the development plans, the medium term plans, as against the preparation of the local plans. So these are some of the realities on the ground. But whatever be the case, Lands Commission has been helping a lot by pre-financing local plans because survey and mapping division is part of the Lands Commission. They are able to coordinate together to get the base maps so that we can use the base map as an input. And also when it comes to the demarcation, there has been uh, maybe a standard way of sharing the plots so that some will go into, it's like a butter system. They don't give you cash. Maybe you do 10 demarcations and then they give you one plot as a compensation. So that has been the system that we have been practicalizing. But when you go to other areas that are purely two lands, here the traditional owners play a crucial role by financing the processes because that plays the role of lands commission is a bit minimal. And the assemblies, as I indicated earlier, has not been uh, refinancing some of the activities. So it's the traditional rulers who liaise with the surveyor and then the fiscal planners to implement the local plans. Uh, I have planner Dominic Kia Opon, who is a Sunyani Municipal Fiscal Planning Officer. He also responds to some of the issues there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there's a question about does the assemblies have special plans? In fact, with the coming into force with the Land Use and Special Planning Act, now all the assemblies have been mandated to come up with a development framework, structure plan, and then the local plan. So not all the assemblies, but now there's an effort that every assembly must have a special development plan, framework, structure plan, and a local plan. Then consultation on local plan. We have as he said that the surveyors are not many, but we make sure that wherever we go on consultation, there's a surveyor that is among the team. Quite recently, we had one at a, a community, Benu and there was a surveyor representing, which is very good. And Sunyani, we don't do anything without the work of the surveyor. And what we are doing now is to make sure when you go to the third, then you submit the risk survey plan so that we all sit down and do the necessary correction so that the, the shifts and the other things are minimal so that we get the people to do the correct on the ground. At times, in the past, if you take some of the layout of Sunyana or the local plans, there are a lot of shifts as it was uh, said by the first presenter, because the layout was not prepared or the base map was not prepared by the surveyor, it created a lot of shifts. So what we are trying to solve now is that when you go to the third, 
you try and give us the risk survey plan so that at the end of the day, we know that the planner give you A and you have submitted A so that we all be on the same page. I think these are some of the questions that came. And with the planning comments, as he said, now with the technology available, Sunyani, we have like the whole municipality sitting on our laptop. So when Lands Commission bring the co planning comment, what we do is that we superimpose it on the master plan of Sunyane so that we know exactly where the land is. Then we can give our comment whether in future it's going to be considered as a residential or it's going to be considered as a commercial. So this has the technology that we are using to help so that we all get a very good registration of land. Thank you so much. All right, so we go for the next set of questions. Sovia Hanan, my sister, and then um, Sovia Joseph Ewa, and then my brother in the Batakali. All right, so go ahead, Sovia. Um, that was a nice presentation. And I think we have all been fed in and educated. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard the regional planner. I heard the regional planner saying they now have drones that they fly and then digitize. And then I thought this was the work of the director of service to capture special information, prepare the base maps, and then give out to the um, planners to work on. The, the back people want to hear as well. <coughs> I thought this was the, um, in the ambit of the director of service for field data collection okay. in relation to drones. Okay. All right. Or just data collection. So um, based on what do you do this work and at what, with what reference do you digitize and uh, collect this information. But in the end, I would say, if this is what to do, we expect that maybe these drones sent to survey and mapping for them to collect that field data for you. Thank you. My sister? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I want to know what is a detailed site plan? And then um, can a local plan be named af uh, after a company or an individual? And then you also talk of uh, digitizing, uh, that is using a drone to fly and then get your data. But most of the times at the assemblies, we see buildings which are supposed to fall within a plot, but they fall outside the plot or it's crossing. What methods do you use to correct that on ground? Thank you. All right, uh, Joseph? Joseph and then it comes to you. Thank you very much. Um, this to the planner. Um, with step four, you spoke about stakeholder consultation. But um, I'm of a view that why doesn't stakeholder com consultation become your step one? because value and risk management study is very, very important for any project to take up. So I'm of the view that moving forward, your stakeholder consultation should really be step one. That is my view, unless you have something else. All right. I'm Savia Ishmael Wepia Kabangi, Ghana Water Company. Uh, as the cliche goes, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. And let me also add that if we fail to implement the plans we have, then we are failed. I think mostly this is a situation we are confronted uh, with. Uh, my questions, there are two. 
One is, in most of the cities, even some regional capitals, we still don't have local plans for some of the neighborhoods, which are just around town. And you see that for we, the utilities, sometimes we need to plan our pipelines to pass along property boundaries and all that. And if you have towns right in the cities, we don't have local plans, and development is haphazard. It affects a lot. The second one is for LUSPA. In every plan we have, we try to adjust or calibrate. I want to find out whether do you often adjust or calibrate your local plans based on the asphalt information, and how often do you do that? I think basically uh, those are my questions. And the final one is that there should be a forum where all the stakeholders, because the talk is too much. We know the problems, but to implement, to implement and find solutions is where the problem lies on. So we need a forum where all the stakeholders will really come find the solutions and resolve and commit to solve the problems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the questions. Um, yes, um, you can answer those ones. Yeah. And then, um, I think I want to start from the drones issue. But the drones was being purchased by German government for the regions, purposely for the street naming and property addressing system. And uh, before we fly the drone, there is a need for you to get clearance from Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. In fact, this issue has come up at the Regional Lands Commission level, of which I'm a member, and I've responded to it. In fact, uh, we don't intend to add survey work to our core mandate. And as I indicated in my presentation, we are bringing all alternative geospatial data to help us facilitate the process of getting the base maps. So as I said, if there is a need for us to fly the drone to get an Im image which we can digitize, I'm not saying that that forms the basis of the base map. After all, it's the work of the surveyor to give us the base map and the drudgery and experience that we have had in the preparation of the base map. That was why I was recommending that maybe it can be used as an alternative that we can fly it, <coughs> and then the surveyor will certify it, or the regional surveyor will approve it as per the output of his or her own officer, who is a surveyor, not a planner. So please, let's get that one clear. It's not for preparation of this map. It came as an intervention for the preparation of street naming and property addressing system. And once it is geospatial based, in the region here, when we were training the participants that will use the drone, I co-opted two surveyors from the region to be part of this exercise. And I remember Fauzi and one other guy who were trained in the region to use the drone to facilitate the exercise. Thank you very much. Uh, our sister also asked about the, a detailed site plan. So a site plan supposed to give you the dimensions of the parcel and the surrounding land use of the area. And what we do at the office is when there's a challenge on the local plan, we need to submit it to technical subcommittee, also to special plan committee for revision so that we revise the area to suit the ground situation. So that is how it is done. So, and then the Ghana water talk about areas that do not have local plans. It's true some regional capital, some neighborhoods do not have. But normally you need to also liaise with the physical plan or the assembly to also help you where there are no local plans to guide your operations. And we also will ask that there should be more collaboration between the assemblies and the Ghana water 
Sunyane, a lot of areas, we have local plans. But you go there, they pass the pipelines through People's Plus without consulting the local plan or the assembly. So we also ask that let us all work together. Let's work together so that we all have a beautiful city. And then on, on the issue of the revision, how often the plans are calibrated and those things. In fact, that one is the core mandate of the surveyor. I think at times you even update your system of grading and all those things. I remember about six months ago, all the surveyors were sent to the district to paint some coordinates for those exercises. Because I'm not a uh, staff there, I can't give a, a comprehensive report on that, but I think these are some of the things that you are doing. You see, you are supposed to give us that data for us to prepare the local plans. So whichever grading system or uh, the, the <laughs> level that you want to go, we are there for you. So if you give us the right thing, then we will use it to work. Unless there are exceptional cases whereby the planner arrogates onto himself a severe and a planner, doing the business up and all those things. So uh, at times we count on you to give us the data. And it will be surprising to you that, as we are seeing, most of the core areas or the build-up areas in our cities have not been revised for over 30 years now. Had it not been this street naming exercise that we are using to update our local plans, at times getting the base maps to revise the local plans from the SUV and mapping division is very difficult because those areas are build-up areas. So we're supposed to pay for it. All the plots have been allocated already. All the interests have been registered. And you know, the survey at the revision of the Soviet Act brought about this cadastra. Hitherto, we were doing the plotting and all those things without coordinates. So automatically, if you bring the, the, the latest innovation on ground, you realize that there are shifts which all of us should appreciate. So at times, you should also do us the favor by giving us updated images that we can use to revise our local plans to conform to those areas that have not been registered so that subsequent registrations will be accurate on the ground per the cadastre that you prepared. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I've been reliably informed that lunch is ready. And like I said, we want to plead with them to be with us on the next session so that we can have, uh, once the solution is being presented, they can also add their voice to whatever the session will be. On that note, I want to ask the chairman to give us his remarks. Now we'll go for lunch. When we come back, we we'll continue with the session. Thank you. Thank you, MC. Uh, let me first commend the speakers, Savia Isaac Labi and Planner Maxwell Amponsa, supported by <laughs> yes, Planner Dominic Yaopon, uh, who was a lawyer in court who came to support Maxwell. Um, it briefly, as I was telling the MC that what we are just discussing at this session, if it were not because we are hungry and some people need to leave back to their office, is the practicality of all that we are going to discuss here, except, of course, the core surveying subjects. Because right from, some of us, right from training, whilst I was at KMUS, I was working with the planning office in Kufrudia, I was doing internship with them. So I know them and I've been with them all this time. So I, I commend you. It looks like you have a new um, paradigm shift listening to you, but some of your colleagues are still in the old system. They want to do things at the blind side of the land surveyor who is supposed to cooperate with them. What the presentation, especially from our colleagues from the LUSPA, was exactly what was being done in the past. The base maps were there to be given to the office, the old town planning office, and the layout to be prepared. And given back to the surveyors, if SMD at that time, SD, survey department, could not implement, could not carry it out, then it was given to the licensed surveyors to do that. When the population started increasing and there was pressure on land, nobody could wait for his friends. And that was where the planning schemes, which we are discussing now, which has not been set on the ground, started even being used for registration purposes. Nobody could wait for his friend. 
and that is where we are now. So when I see the professionals fighting among themselves, I just keep quiet and look at them. You are coming to solve a problem which you did not create. Others created it. Why don't we cooperate and see what we can do in our generation rather than to um, blame each other? So this forum, I believe our colleagues here from the regional office will send a message that we need to collaborate and not to heap insults, sorry to say that, or blame each other. What I also realize is that exchange of data or information, let's face facts, no institution organization has sufficient budget. And so my colleague here, Sylvia Labi was saying, should we even go for the comments from the planner? Of course, if we were all exchanging data, just as you put the comments or the letter from the Lands Commission and the plan on your layout, Certainly, we could also do similar things. So we are even preparing our minds as to when we are coming for the, of course, we are not taking your work, but to get idea that before even the doctor prescribes the medicine, you know which direction is going. I believe these are things that they stated the planners to get us into this position. Uh, the little that we can do, colleagues, let us do it in our generation. Others have committed whatever they could commit, but now it is our turn, and we should minimize the blames. In running up for this session, let me once again thank all of you, Savia President and your team, and ladies and gentlemen, the press, the IT team, for supporting this session. We don't intend to keep you starving, but even as you queue for your rice, your potato, remember, we need cooperation, and certainly we should, as much as possible, correct the wrongs as much as we can. Where we cannot, let us continue to cooperate. Thank you for your attention. Bon appétit. Thank you very much, Chair, for sharing the session. Um, ESCO and then the dignitaries will go to executive lunch for their lunch, and the rest of us will meet down there they have the set up there for us to take our lunch as well. We are coming back after 30 minutes. So let's please be on time so that we can have more time for questioning. Thank you. So we are coming back at 3.30. Yeah. So I would start by introducing the chairperson for the session. He is the Deputy Managing Director of Joama Consult. He's an immediate past president of the institution and an associate member of the Ghana Institution Institute of Engineers. Shall we, with an applause, welcome our chair for this session, Sovia Dr. John Koku Amaglo. Sir, please, shall we take your response? Thank you. Hey, planning committee, you can do something. Why this session? Why not the third one? Well, I think I have no other option than to accept. I may say that it is something like some bias, but once you have decided that I should chair this session, I gladly accept. But I need your support so that I can bring this session also to a successful end. So I have accepted to be the chair for this session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, for accepting to chair the session for us. We are already late. 
And so, would want to call on the first presenter. Sovia Dr. Joseph Amaglo to present to us on the topic, the role of the surveyor and planner in the preparation and implementation of local plans. Shall we welcome him with a clap of Mr. Chairman, I think we have ladies, yes, and we have gentlemen. I want to thank you all for the opportunity to stand here and present on a topic. Yeah. Which actually from the first presentation. Isaac Labi, to our planners, Dominic and Albert, they have given us problems. I think my presentation should be the solution to those problems. But in fact, this world is not balanced. Over. Never balance at all. You know why? I'm to present in 20 minutes. And the question time is 25 minutes. I saw a week to say that. I'll talk for 20 minutes and then you drill me for 25 minutes. The chairman, I want to object to. I'll beg for the five minutes to be added. Talking time, 25. Question time, 20. Let's negotiate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this opportunity. My paper is actually about to propose a strategy that will help us solve the problem that we have been facing. We are not the ones who create the problem, but this is the time for us to face the realities and solve it. So I will have an introduction, give a background, then we look at some aspects of coordination and visibility, then a strategy of how the team, which is coordinated implementation and management of local plans for socio-economic development in Ghana, we can. And then I'll bring out some steps to help us as surveyors and planners how we can make more money so that the preparation of base plans, base maps, will be good and easy and we'll get involved as collaborators. We'll link together planners, surveyors, the district assemblies, and the professional surveyors. At the end, I will bring some conclusion, but I will not say thank you. The reason why I won't say thank you is we have to implement what I'm about to say. After that, then I can say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start. So next. Now, we know from the discussion from the beginning that local plans as we know them today, are actually layouts or schemes. A lot of schemes or these local plans are in existence. They are being implemented on the ground, either good or bad, but there are what? Problems. We have insecurity of people who have their parcels. Insecurity in the sense that they have to employ other people to stand as guards. I don't want to call them by their name, but they are guards to protect that piece of parcel. 
what is happening? Is it because of the implementation? Yes. From what we have heard from the past presenters, there is a missing link. And that missing link results in a gap. And that gap is being, uh, being occupied by these unauthorized people. Anything that has to do with land, the first person they will mention is the surveyor. If a vehicle spoils on the road, you say, ah, have you ah, go to the mechanic. So it's we, the land surveyors. Anything about land, they refer to the land surveyor. How can we, as land surveyors, have the trust of the public? So that any time there are issues on land, they will call us as mechanics who will fix cars. Next. Let's look at the background. We have two regulatory bodies that deal with issues regarding land. We have the Land Commission and the Land Use and Special Planning Authority, LUSPA. They are the two bodies mandated by law to deal with land issues in the country. LUSPA, for instance, find themselves under a different ministry. Land Commission also under different ministry. These two regulatory bodies have to work together. But by virtue of where they are located, coordination is key. Thank you. So, Lands Commission is under the Ministry of Land and Natural Resources, while we find LUSPA under the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation, MESTI. We have to know that where the agency is located is of very vital importance. The core functions of these two agencies is very important. They need support from their ministries. And if the support is not coming, it means they will not be able to perform their function. LUSPA being at the Mesti is actually a long journey. Being at Mesti, they are not really near the people who they are to deal with. The district assemblies, they have to be close to the people. By virtue of being a member or a board member of LUSPA, I can tell you that arrangements are far advanced to move LUSPA from Mesti to the Ministry of Local Government decentralization, and rural development. By that, their visibility to the district assemblies will be much felt. Next. The function of LUSPA and Lands Commission is to what? Complement each other. Keeping to their core functions. So that at 1036, for Lands Commission and Act 925 respectively give them that mandate. Then, as I said earlier, the ministry under which any agency is placed is vital for its effective functioning and access to the needed resources for its core functions. For collaboration between Land Commission and LUSPA, Land Commission have some duty and that assistance from Lands Commission will help LUSPA. So, government funding always comes in. Next. If there is coordination between Lands Commission and LUSPA, there will be seamless integration. From what we have heard from the planners, they go in to do, they have, they move just to 
satisfy the public because the, the local plants are needed urgently. But land commission is to supply the base map. Without that, we have problems which we have seen in the central region, as shown by surveyor Isaac Labi. The most important thing that we need to do is this. For effective collaboration between land commission and LUSPA, the government as a body have to re actually recognize the importance of these two land regulatory bodies. And that comes to cost. Next. So funding by government is very, very crucial. Land Commission will need government funding to provide the required best man for LUSPA to produce the local plan for implementation. The collaboration between LUSPA and Land Commission will then turn the fortunes of district assemblies around. And I have a key or a test case from practice outside Ghana where I will lay it out how a, co a cooperation between Land Commission and LUSPA will lead to the increase in the internally generated revenue of the district assemblies, which means the local governments will be having much money to be able to assist in the preparation of any local plan in the future. We need to know there is an inert hidden revenue which the district assemblies, as of now, are not tapping. From the local plans, the district assemblies are only collecting building permits. Okay? From the building permits, that's why they generate revenue. But there is a hidden in net source where they can earn additional source of revenue apart from the building permit. Next. By law, Act 925 mandates LUSPA to prepare the local plans as we hear from our planners, Dominic and others. And their final product, having struggled to get a base map in any form, using drones, using open street maps with their software and the rest, their final product come out with a unique parcel number. And that unique parcel number is what they have as their final product. When that is finished, the next stage, as the law requests, according to the Land Act, 1036, it's the Land Commission that have to carry on the demarcation of that particular local plan so far prepared. But here, as I say, as we all know, and as we all accuse each other, the planners accusing the land surveyors, some of them turning into planners, and we, the land surveyors, also accusing the planners of going ahead to do things that they should not do. That gap is the problem. And we need to find a way of closing that gap. It is not by sitting down and saying we are collaborating. There is something wrong that we need to solve practically and using technology to do that. So, the additional processing that needs to be done on the local plans provided by LUSPA is to make sure that local plan is processed so that each and every parcel in that local plan have the coordinates. So with the unique parcel number, a minimum plot of 
side four will have four coordinates with the beacon number. So if I'm talking of a strategy for coordinated implementation and management of local plans or schemes for socioeconomic development, LUSPAN need to make the plans available and those plans, Lands Commission have to add value to it. And that additional value that Lands Commission will add to it will make the two, Lands Commission and LUSPA, coming together to work. So what will be the role of the surveyor and the planner if we want to adopt this strategy? Next. There is a national disaster recently of the APRC. Power, fire outbreak and the rest. I'm going to use that as a prototype for us if we really want to adopt a strategy but why by we will improve the economic condition of people in APRC. There is a need for the plan that was prepared as a means of solving that disaster, alleviating the hardship of the people, there is the need for LUSPA and Lands Commission to work together using what I'm going to lay as a method, step by step. I have 15 steps, we'll go through it together. And what is the basis of this, my paper, is that, please, Lands Commission and LUSPA will have to be working together now through the district assemblies using the public data room, as mentioned by the planners in their presentation. I will explain how that will be possible. There will be a sharing formula for the outcome by way of profit for each and every individual. And the professional surveyors who will be going physically to do these demarcations, I want to say that they will have direct benefit through the patronage of their services by the public. Next. On the screen, this is the final draft of the APRC area where the disaster occurred. So this is the final product coming from LUSPA. They have done their work according to the Act 921. So last commission is to do the next which will mean the demarcation. So if all these are well prepared, because they have gone to the field, these are existing buildings which they have made sure that each and every building or structure here is actually located within a plot. Then the area where there are no development the layout is well defined. Small, small buildings were made, they made sure that they are all situated in a particular plot. So this is perfect. But what happens if this is just left for the unauthorized people to start doing what they know how to do best? Let's take the top here, just this small section here see how the strategy I'm proposing is going to work for all the regulatory bodies and the professional surveyor to benefit. Next. Now, that top section that I'm just 
didn't show on the tree. When the final product comes out from Lucifer, they have the plot number. That is what we are calling it, the unique battle numbers. Then for the Lands Commission to add value to this parcel, this is what Lands Commission is supposed to do. Get the coordinates of each and every parcel. So if we want to consider parcel 30 and parcel 32, for instance, we have to generate what is called the survey data for that particular parcel. And for a minimum, size of 32. Okay, okay. So this 32 is a plot with five sides. Next. What you see on the screen is that survey data. All the coordinates are captured with the become number. So plot 30 and plot 32. Next. So for the demarcation of this particular parcel, that data, which is the survey data, have to be sent to the data room for any surveyor to be able to assess. And what is happening is that, as being done, for instance, in Nigeria, any prospective owner of a plot will write a letter to commission a surveyor. And that surveyor, with all indications showing the, old, the true ownership, will use that letter of commission to apply for the survey data, this time from the survey, from the uh, public data room at the district assembly. Next. And what the letter will request is the plot number and the beacon coordinates. Lands Commission is already doing things of that nature, but this time what is going to happen is that the land surveyor will not be given only one regional number to start. If you have a 20 sided plot, you say plot one, point two, point three, point four. No. Every plot number will be paid for, next, and every beacon will be paid for by the land, the, the, by the client of the land surveyor. In so doing, we are going to have the land commission gaining more by way of revenue instead of one regional number. They are going to have money paid for 20 beacons. And then for loose part, instead of just giving the plan out and wait for two or three years before if somebody is ready to develop, then the person will come and ask for beacon uh, building permit. They will also be able to be generating data, to be generating some revenue anytime a survey data is requested. Next. And then the economic gain for the professional surveyor is that with the writing of the letter of commissioning, it means it is you, that professional surveyor, who have access to go and apply for the survey data in the public data room. So quarks are eliminated. And then for the economic gain for the Ghanaian, you don't have to employ any land guard to be paying extra money. Next. Then, there will be check and balances in the layout, as we are seeing. Because if you use the real-time kinematic mode of GNISF, there is a topology that is already existing in the layout. If you are setting plot three and plot five, they are together. So there will be common boundary. So if Soviet A is setting out a point for Mr. Chumesi, and Soviet B is going to set out plot for Mr. Mensa, the two common points will be set by the two of them. So they will check each other. So there is quality control. And next, you will see that according to the Act 1036, Lands Commission is supposed to give authority to provide for any 
So they had to go out to do anything, something like a warrant. And that authorization, so far, we have not been able to prepare anything of that nature. Some of the signatures are that even the person whose signature is for he or she, he will find it difficult to recognize the deny I saw his that he is not his or her signature. By this method, we are going to have a way of stopping the so many court cases and police trying to go for and police trying to go for investigation to determine the fraud. Next. And finally, we can conveniently say that yeah, for me. This strategy will have a positive effect on the common fund for the district assemblies because they will be getting money from two sources. The bitcoin that they are selling and then the building permit. So two sources of getting money. Then finally for the government, if government will actually invest in and uh, uh, will take interest in investing into something, then the return on investment must be huge. So if the government will be earning something because of the collaboration between last, uh, last commission and this one, they won't be able to actually help in giving out money or putting in the budget how they can be able to prepare more benchmark for the local government and then in the district assemblies they will be able to have enough funds to open up some of the roads within those particular layouts and be able to continue any a lot from the local plan. And finally, I want to say that we can only conveniently get this benefit of having internally to the greatest revenue increase if and only if there is a collaboration between last commission, loose work, and the surveyor. Because with the survey data, the data is already in data. So nobody will go to the site and change anything. And the sheet that we are seeing, those digital data is not going to shift. Each and every surveyor will be able to earn money. Therefore, I am strongly proposing that all local funds should go to further processing to actually create the coordinate and have the survey. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm so sorry I wasn't able to, I wasn't there physically to present this paper to everyone. I'm Edmond Tete Jr. And then I'm presenting on the spatial analysis of this field in the greater Kumasi. Um, land, as we all know, is an important resource for human survival. But as, as important as land is, it has so many problems and controversies surrounding it. These controversies are mostly over who owns the land, who has access to the land, and who uses the land. The increasing controversies about land is as owning to these factors, um, population growth, urbanization, and then food security. Um, when we come to the, the when it comes to the greater Kumasi region, 
this field is on the high. And these, if you look at the localities in every dish in, in the region, every every locality is recording at least one, at least a, a land dispute related case. And then this has left land parcels on the undeveloped as a result of the, the dispute resolution process. From the judicial reports in 2017, 91% of the disputes that they had in their records took seven months and above to be resolved. It is as a result of this that we wanted to identify the nature of land disputes in the greater Kumasi region and then per perform a spatial analysis to identify the hotspot zones in the region. So this is the map of the study area. So for the study to be successful, we, we collected data from the, land, uh, the survey and mapping divisions, like data from the divisions, ranging from 2016 to 2021. And then for anonymity sake, we didn't collect spatial data for the individual cases. But then we geocoded the, uh, the incidences to the central positions of the localities where the disputes can be found. So these are the results of some of the disputes that we found. Poor demarcation of land. This is as a result of park surveyors, mostly park surveyors, per the surveyors report. And then it's a major contributing factor for the increase in land disputes in the region. And, then, and the justification for the, the use of park surveyors is uh, going through the right process to get the qualified land surveyors for these demarcations is expensive. So they use the park surveyors who won't charge as much. That's the notion for these the, the use of these uh, park surveyors. The park surveyors won't charge as much as the land surveyors. So the professional land or the qualified land surveyors, this <clears throat> leads to the overlap of because of the, the, the park surveyors, they don't know the actual job. They, they demarcate as as they like. And then most of these places too, they don't there, there's no approved layout for them to follow to be able to demarcate it properly. So they just demarcate as they like, and then it leads to overlap, and then it's causing a major dispute. For the undetermined boundaries, the lack of it's very synonymous to the customary lands. If you look at the, the customary lands, they lack proper documentations of their boundaries. In the olden days, they used in Tomek, mostly they used in Tomek to demarcate their boundaries, but then as um, developments uh, caught up to those places, they were caught anywhere, that, that those streets were cleared. And now there are no proper documentations of those boundaries. So it's causing disputes between stools and stools. It's a major cause of disputes between two stools, as they don't know exactly where their boundaries are. Another major cause of Dispute is a no approved layout scheme, no approved layout scheme. So most of these areas where they reported disputes, they didn't have a layout scheme, and so it made the the resolutions of the dispute very difficult for the, the surveyor involved in trying to find out who who has encroached or who who owns a parcel of the land. Because there was no layout scheme, it was very difficult for the surveyors to be able to solve this, uh, provide a, a solution for these disputes. And then the it was very difficult for the surveyors to provide, to solve these disputes. So for the frontline sales to, it's, it's another major cause of disputes in the, in, the, in the region. And that's because unauthorized members of landowners are selling land to are posing as landowners and then selling lands to uh, unsuspecting people. For the multiple sales of land, it's it's when they are locating the lands to two di two different people. Looking at the the lack of transparency with um, land sales, people are selling a, a particular piece of land. Landowners are selling a particular piece of land to two different people or to multiple people. And then in, either intentionally or unintentionally. For the sporadic demarcation of land, because for some areas they have no approved layout scheme, the landowners, when someone comes to buy a land, 
they just tell the person to bring his or his over here. Institutions and individuals to this one to the most common type of dispute among this type of uh, individual and litigants was the boundary. And then it all comes down to the no approved layout scheme or poor demarcations of the boundaries. The schools and individuals too was the, was mostly multiple sale or was mostly multiple sale or even fraudulent sale. The stools and stools, the type of the type of conflict between the stool and stool was mostly the the lack of undetermined boundaries. One coming into one, them not knowing exactly where each each other's boundary is. So for the type of dispute, we note we we <coughs> it was noticed that boundary dispute was the most common type of dispute. They record we recorded seven six percent of the of the total dispute followed by ownership and um, inheritance and encroachment so to know the special extent of these disputes we plotted the the type of disputes we plotted the type of dispute and then it was realized that the boundary disputes spread across but then the ownership the ownership dispute was mostly centered around the with um, uh, localities with proximity to the central business district. And so for the spatial extent of the dispute, we realized that most of the dispute you move, the longer, the, the farther you move away from the central business district, the lower you, you are less likely to record the dispute. And so once we had a dispute and then we had the uh, we had a geo database for the dispute. We decided to perform, uh, to create a kernel density map that would depict a smooth surface for the land dispute cases so that we're able to see the places where there are disputes. And so you realize that the shaded, the regions with the shades of red had the highest densities of land dispute cases. But then as you move away from those, the central business district going to as you move away from the central business district, you realize that the cases recorded were very low. So, the disputes that we recorded were mostly concentrated in localities in the central part of the state. And then based on the 2021 census, 61% of the region's populations can be found in the urban centers, which saw an increment of 15% from the, 2020, the 2010 census. And as urban population continues to grow in these areas, it can be argued that the competition for space too is going to intensify. And then this will lead to an increase in land disputes as a result of the current environment where the conversion of agricultural land to urban usage results in the workflow of the workflow to stakeholders or landowners. So to conclude Poor demarcation of land parcels, no approved layout scheme, fraudulent sales, multiple sales dominates the causes of land disputes in the study area. And then these causes are the major factors, or they contribute to the major types of disputes that we, we found in the region. And then the incidence of the land disputes was mostly around the urban and the peri-urban areas with close proximity to the central business district. These localities and towns, they are represented as the shade of red in the kernel density map, and they represent the hospital zones. And then, so for, for my recommendations, given the increasing trend of land disputes, there's scope for future research in probing into the factors that influence a town or uh, a locality's vulnerability to land disputes. So we, we to be able to care the or minimize the land disputes that we are recording, it, there's, there should be further studies about um, uh, looking at how a town can be vulnerable to land disputes and then we find ways to solve that, prevent it from happening. And then future research can also concentrate on the potential disparities 
in land disputes by comparing the social demographic status of those who live in the designated high, high risk zones to those who do not. And then also, proactive planning for these per urban areas, these uh, new urban sprawls, will help minimize future land disputes. Thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for that brilliant delivery. Um, instead of the question time, we'll ask you to still be online. We want to take the next presentation and then we'll combine the questions time together. Uh, those eight house, well, the uh, program is supposed to go for a coffee break, but I think that will be too much. So what we want to do is we'll continue with the next presentation, take questions and answers, and then we'll break finally so that after taking the break, we don't need to come back again. I hope um, the house will accept. Yes. Thank you very much. So with that much, I do want to invite the next presenter. Uh, the topic to be presented is multi-temporal analysis on urbanization and its impacts on vegetation cover. A case study of Greater Accra Region of Ghana to be presented by IATA, Larry PB, and Debo ND. So I think the lead presenter can join us when we do the presentation. Thank you. Let's welcome the presenter. So this is going to be the agenda. I'll just run through because this is a popular topic, not to 
for you. So there will be an introduction, um, and then and then um, the methodology. So the methodology will focus on the image pre-processing, image classification, some spatial analysis, and then I'll show you results and analysis that was made, and finally draw conclusions and some recommendations. So globally. More people live in urban areas um, than in rural areas, and UN projections estimate that by 2050, um, a greater um, extent of global um, uh, the, the world, the, a greater portion of the world will be living in urban areas than in rural areas. So the estimate says that about 56 percent and 64 percent of the global population will be living in urban areas, and this 56 and 64 are for Africa and Asia respectively. So this tells us that the rapid urbanization that was experienced by now industrialized nations is currently underway in Africa. And then we find Ghana in, in Africa. And then the most urbanized area of Ghana is the Greater Akara region, and that informs the choice of steady area. So we see here the population from the Ghana Statistical Service. You see that in 1984, um, we have about 83% of um, the population living in urban areas. This increased to about 87 in 2000. And then by the 2010 population census, we have about 91%. So um, we have the fixed extent. The area of the country or the greater Accra region is fixed. So as urbanization, as there is urbanization and the urban population increases, then it means that some other things will have to make space. So here we analyze, we want to see, a question comes to mind, how has the urban environment been able to accommodate this massive urban expansion? So that is the question we seek to answer. So yeah, so I mentioned about the study from the Economic Intelligence Unit. Yes, and the highlighted portion is the green spaces per person parameter, which is like um, a division of the total vegetation area divided by the number of people living in, in that area. So you see, I want you to keep this average value. The average value is 73.6. And in the case of Ghana, you see, if it is clear, you see that there is no data available as at the time of this um, research. So this is the study area. So these are the research objectives. So first, you try to estimate, uh, want to quantify the, the total vegetation area between the period of the, uh, the study, which is from 1985 to 2014. We determine the population per vegetation density, so the total area of vegetation divided by the number of people living in the area. And then we identify green areas and, and try to uh, estimate the extent of their impact. And then finally, we ascertain the existence and effectiveness of a greenness policy. So these are the, the data that was used. So three sets of data, um, Landsat imagery, uh, 1985, 2000, and 2014. And then we have population data from the Ghana Statistical Service, um, reference data, autophoto, and topo map. And also, um, we got data from um, Ghana Meteorological Agency, because we want to see if Indeed, the change in this urban environmental reduction in vegetation is causing a change in our temperatures. Um, so these are the software that we use. So I know this is a, a very uh, popular topic, so I wouldn't want to focus too much on uh, the processing aspect. I want to show more of the results and analysis that we have So first, we start with um, image processing. Um, so um, two of the, the image, satellite imagery, the, 20, 2000 and 2014 were of higher level, so um, we didn't need to do a lot of processing, but the, the 1984 is an old image from the Landsat 5 series, so we had to perform um, some geometric corrections. So let's go. Okay, so there's a workflow. Unfortunately, it's not so clear. So first, we perform image uh, rectification and restoration. Um, so yeah, here um, we want to since we want to bring the image all the 
set of image in, into the same coordinate system we perform a 2D affine. Um, here you will have to identify some ground control points. Um, 2D affine has um, six parameters. You need a minimum of three ground control points. Um, we use more than as a rule of thumb so that we can perform checks. Um, so here uh, I want to uh, focus on this image. So anyone who knows Vetakra, you see Tetepashi there, you see a very prominent <coughs> green area. I don't want to, it's green area in quotes, if indeed it, it is, it, it qualifies to be a green area. That is the uh, Achimota forest. So you see there's a black dot there showing the shift in the position when compared to the topo map. And then after the geometric correction, um, then we see it moved in, into its rightful position. So this is the first part of the metric correction. And then, and then we do atmospheric correction. So some of the satellite data, you, when you download, you come up with uh, DM values. So you have to convert this to top of atmospheric um, reflectance so that you can use this for the analysis. And also, sometimes you see that when you check the surface of unsilted water, the values are supposed to be zero because reflectance in very deep water should be zero, there shouldn't be any reflection. But you see some noise, so we do that object subtraction to remove this. And so this is visualized in this image. So you see on the left, left side, we see a DM value of 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and then we see the reflectance, uh, the corresponding reflectance value. So I said I, I don't want to bore you with some of these numbers. So let's. Yeah, so. The, the key thing to be able to estimate the vegetation and, and identify the urban areas is to make the we do MPBR calculation and then image classification. So, so image classification we have on supervised and supervised. In this case, we use supervised classification. So um, we train a set of pixels and we use it to classify all the pixels in, in the image scene into various classes. So we have to train and classify. There are several methods. In this case, we use the maximum likelihood approach. These were the classes that were identified. And the focus were on two things, uh, the vegetated areas and also the urban area. So let's go. Yes, so we use the maximum likelihood approach. And then the NDVI. So NDVI is, uh, is a function that is applied to two main bands of the imagery, the red and the near. And the idea behind this is that there's low reflectance in the red band um, and there's high reflectance in the near infrared band. So by combining these two bands, you can tell the health of vegetation in the image scene. So if you go ahead, you see the relationship. So first we subtract the red band from the near infrared and we divide it by we divide by the summation of the two bands. So this gives us a range. Very, very low values are values that show that there's minimal vegetation and high values will give you um, high vegetation, which means the vegetation in the image scene. So, so, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, again, we want to quantify the, if the, the green areas, we want to be able to quantify the green areas. So, um, once we get the NDVI range, we should be able to tell which portion of the range is given as vegetation. So we try a lot of thresholds. Uh, so first, um, we use the mean, so which means that from the middle value to the highest value, uh, the set of pixels are considered to be urban or green, uh, green areas. And then we play with uh, also a 60%. So from 60% of the range to the highest value is considered to be vegetation. But the one that was um, used actually accepted was the interactive threshold. Approach. So here you vary the, the threshold where you want to split between the non vegetation and the vegetation, and then you use the classified um, imagery as base. So when you vary the threshold value and then you compare it to your reference data and then your classified information, and make sure that the places that you have to be vegetation is consistent with the classification that you take. So this is a model that was used to do the uh, threshold and then see. Uh, identify the pixels that fall within the vegetation trees. And we, yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. So we come now to the spatial analysis. So the first thing we want to do, we 
want to calculate the area of the, the portion of the static area that falls within the green zones. So first we calculate the vegetation and then once we have that, we can take the statistical data from Ghana Statistical Service, the population, and then we divide to get that missing parameter in the population. So yes, please go ahead. So this is um, the boundary of AMA um, at that time. So um, I know there's been some changes in, in the total number of districts, but here we use as at the time this research uh, was done, um, there were 16 of them. So this is the boundary of AMD. And then knowing the resolution of imagery, the resolution, um, the satellite imagery is 30 meter resolution. So if we are able to quantify the number of green pixels, then we can multiply this by the square of this value to get the area covered by it. Vegetation. So please go ahead. So this is the expression. So first we have the vegetation. So it's an expression of number of vegetation pixels times square of the resolution. And once we have that, then we can go ahead to calculate the green spaces per person. Uh, green spaces per person parameter. Please go ahead. And one of um, one of the objectives was to identify green areas. Now, not just green areas. Because you see a lot of trains around. But this green area should be a set of pixels with, um, like within an urban area. As the definition says, it should be set aside for either recreation or for the purpose of uh, aesthetics. And it should be within an urban environment. So these were digitized for uh, uh, supervised and also from the NDBI treasury. Room. So you see from the left side, when um, the green space was extracted, there's some kind of noise. So we had to clean it. So um, GIS, we have something we call morphological operations. So you can <coughs> clean the raster, and then you can convert this from raster to a polygon. So once you have a polygon, you can do some buffer analysis. But how do you do? Research has shown that the, the temperature around the green space is lower than the average temperature in the urban area. So um, we know there are other uh, parameters at play. People say that even the tree species also influence this. So, but here we wanted to buffer and see that if there's a green space here, to what extent does it benefit that environment? So to do this, um, we, we wanted to buffer with the parameter. So we use, we find the centroid of this polygon, and then we can get the distance to the shortest side and then the longest side, and we'll find the mean of this value and we use it to do the buffer analysis. So then we, we know that the places within this buffer will have their urban climate affected or influenced by this green space. Please let's go. Yes. So these are results of the NDVI session. Let's go. So now we can get the percentage um, change. So in 1955, for example, we see that 45% uh, um, of the entire region was vegetation. This reduced to about 42 in uh, 2000 and then to about 30% in 2014. Yes, so then we have the classification. So the classification results help us to get where the urban areas are. And then we see the corresponding Pie chart for this. And we go. Yes. Okay. So here we see the urban area. So you see, in 1985, we just we had just about 20 percent of um, the region of Greater Accra being urban. And then by 2000, it increased. So you see, there's minimal change from 1985 to 2000. But from 2000 to 2014, we see a massive change of about 40 percent increase in the urban area. Um, let's go on. Yes. So here is a summary, like a, a bar chart. So we see a decrease, a decrease in the vegetation area. So I won't bore you with the numbers, but the percentages are all given. Please, please. And then you see a flip. So you see the first chart going downward, and then you see the second chart going upward. So it's like um, like a mirror on the first one. So it, it, it's the inverse of the first, and then finally for this one. So 
Once the research has shown that um, vegetation affects the, the, the temperature, urban climate. So once we have identified this from our uh, analysis, then we want to compare it to the, the, the temperatures around to see if really there has been any change. So we got data from the Ghana Meteorological Agency. Can you explain now? Yes. So this are minimum temperatures from the Ghana Meteorological Agency from 1974, 2000, 2015, and then 2019. And then you see the blue charts. So the blue chart tells you the minimum temperature for the whole year, for January and December. And then the whole uh, violet uh, color tells you the, the minimum temperature for 2019. So it's obvious, it's clear, that as you see vegetation decrease, and then urban area go up. There is another phenomenon that is changing, and that is temperature. Okay. So let's let's go on. Um, so then we can go ahead and then do a visualization. So when you look at the green space, you see that um, as of 2014, you see a lot of there's a lot of vegetation to the northwards because the urban expansion is from the south, from the coast up. So if you do the analysis based on the entire thing it will um, show you up. So it is important. So we classify this into two categories. So you see A and then you see B. So A has everything and then B, we cut off the vegetation because there are no urban areas here. So if you use this for analysis, you make it a uh, wrong conclusion. So kind of So this is a chart and then you see the green spaces per person value. Um, for that West, for example, is in excess of 4,000. And the average, as I showed you, Publication is 73.6. So, this, when you go, go to uh, Shah Hills, Bundasi, a lot of green areas there, but they are not strictly speaking green areas because green areas are places that are reserved in urban, otherwise urban environment by the Oxford Regional. Okay, so, and then we went ahead to also visualize the, by cutting off so here. So then we can take a map based on the calculations that we do, and then we vary the color. So you see the very dark ones are places where the green space is person is low, and then the green ones are places where the green space is person value that is high. And it's obvious that uh, you see Accra, with the uh, Accra metropolitan area, then Ubudo, and then uh, Ashiamu, they are also not doing so well because of we all know how. Uh, urbanized this place is can, can you go ahead? So this one is for the second part we we'll cut off the, the population, the vegetation to the northward of the steady area and then we visualize this also in the map. So it follows a similar trend but you see that the values reduce, the values the initial one which was about 4,000 will then reduce to about 400 because we cut off vegetation in the, up in, in the northern part of the region. And so now we can class, classify some areas, the areas whose um, green space per person parameter is below the average value of 73 We can then classify them as critical areas. So as at the time of this day, this day is classified as critical areas. So those, the values we calculated when, when lesser than the average, which is 73 .6. And then we see the Danway, um, where Danway is, like I said, these districts have changed. Um, and, and, but we see AMA, we see like Ubuntu, we see Gai East, and then we see Ashaman as areas that were classified as critical areas. Please go ahead. And then um, we look for impact assessment. So here we identify about um, 15 green areas. And then in quotes, and then we did the buffers around them. So this will tell you that if you live close to this, then you expect that um, the, the climate there will, in a way, be affected by the green storm around you. And this is very important uh, because we all, like uh, a major green space in Accra is um, the Achimota Forest. Um, by definition, it doesn't fall in there because has it been set apart for recreational or um, for aesthetic purposes? That's the question that has to be answered. But the results we are getting here 
tells us how critical uh, that area is to the greenness of the city. Can you go through? Yes. So um, here we we um, analyze the we look at the temperature for the month of the year, which is supposed to be the coolest by the Ghana Metro Statistics. Um, I guess it's supposed to be the coolest month. And when I show you the chart of the vegetation and then the urban areas, here too you see that between 1974 and then 2000, there was just about, um, from 22.5 to about 22.7. But from 2000 to 2015, when we had about 14% change between vegetation and urban, you see a drastic change also in the temperature. So um, I know global warming um, has become a political and economic topic, but these are numbers, these are stats, these are these data that has been collected. And so we, we also have to be conscious of this, that as our urban areas are growing, as we are building more houses and our green areas are going down, the temperature is changing. Okay, please, let's proceed. So, then we come to the final part, that's the, the final part of the objectives. We want to see if there really exists a greenness policy and how effective it is. Um, so research that we did um, saw that there was actually no greenness policy um, in place. However, there are two agencies whose broad mandate to an extent um, give, give them power to protect the environment. So we look at the uh, Environmental Protection Agency um, under the National Environmental Policy. Um, also the Department of Parks and Gardens under the Ministry of Local Government, uh, Decentralization and Rural Development also have their functions uh, in a way. But uh, these functions are not really clear and concrete and precise and straightforward. For example, I've seen tankers from the uh, parks and gardens water some of the, like at the median, the roundabout at test seven, I've seen them water the, the green grass and then the plants are planted there. But I've also seen um, encroachers, developers, fight with estate guys who were playing football on a green field because they wanted to develop the place to the extent that sometimes they come and put a wall and these guys will get up in the middle of the night to come and break the wall. Now currently when someone steals your phone or your laptop and you don't see it, you know you have to report to the police. But if there is an open space, there is a green space, and an encroacher comes, where do you go? Even, you know some agencies, but when you go to the agencies, um, are they aware of like, is there a policy that has educated all stakeholders on um, how important this, these spaces are and how they are affecting our urban environment? And in all this, we saw the most critical part. There are a lot of factors that is contributing to this, but the most critical is our land tenure system. And a lot has been said about planning here, but it's obvious that in most cases, um, there's development before planning. And so though Kuspa will do a very nice plan and say this is an open space or this is a green area, I've seen open space in some layout. But already the land has been given out. And sometimes some old places that people know that this is an open space to play football. To play football has been taken over. So um, this has been shared for all of us um, so that we take note that as we are seeing the erratic changes in our seasons, we are seeing changes in our environment, we see that indeed the next building or the other building or the new building you are seeing is bringing up is all contributing to the change in the temperatures that we are all in. So to conclude, we have proven that we can use remote sensing and GIS data to effectively identify and quantify green areas. Um, we see a direct correlation between the increase in, in the urban areas or the reduction in vegetation and then a corresponding increase in urban areas and importantly in our urban climate. There is an urgent need to formulate a comprehensive greenness policy. 
And I believe with these numbers that we have, with these statistics, um, we have enough ground to initiate um, conversation on the topic. And, and there's still room for improvement. So the um, recommendation is that we can use higher resolution imagery data, we can use subdistrict level data, and also um, we can collect data on the urban areas and also on the temperatures of the areas that are closest to this green species. And with this information, I believe we can drive policy for greenness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Sabia Alex, for that part of the presentation. Uh, I want to call on the chairman and then the other presenters to come up for the present time. But before then, there is an emergency downstairs. Um, Delta Corolla GS 1951-11. Please kindly go down to the parking area and assist someone. Delta Corolla GS 9051-11. Thank you. All right. Um, this is how far we've come with the presentations. Um, I think it's now time for questions. And then our gallant presenters will give us answers to our questions. Uh, we'll do them all day. I can see the Deputy Executive Secretary's hand is up. Yes, yes, I do. But, so it is on the head. Thank you very much, Moshe, and thanks to the presenters for the excellent presentation. Um, my comments go to the first presenter, and I, I speak at this point for the Lands Commission. So um, I, I agree with you fully that there has to be collaboration if we have to make some progress. Now, the Lands Commission, what we are doing, which I want to make public, is that we, are, we have designed a project which we call the Land Reform Project. This project has several components. There are about six components. And out of the six components, the first and paramount component is the mapping component. And this component is going to look at mapping the entire country. We're looking at two levels. So the whole country will be mapped at 25 centimeter ground sample distance. And then we're looking at selected capitals and big cities totaling about 20,000 square kilometers. And we'll map that at 10 GSD, 20, 10 CM GSD. So that, that is what we're going to do. And we are partnering the private sector to do it. Once that is done, we're going to generate auto photo maps and we're going to generate line maps. And these are going to be shared with our partners and our stakeholders. Paramount among our stakeholders is LUSPA. So we're going to share this data with them at no cost to LUSPA so that they can have that as their base maps you know, to develop their local plans for the entire country because we are mapping the entire country and they'll have it in every district for them to be able to, to do their, their local plans. As we speak now, some data has been captured under the current project. The whole of Greater Accra has been flown, and East Day region has also been flown. It will be integrated into the, the, the Ghana Land Reform Project when, when we take off. We are almost at the, at the final stage where we will get clearance from the Ministry of Finance. What we're doing is we are partnering with the private sector and we would use our idea to pay back the private sector over a period of time. So that is what we're doing in terms of our base maps. Now, with collaboration with LUSPA, there are a few examples at the national level which I will share. And I believe that, as the presenter said, because of the 
the, the um, oversight of the national um, LUSPA you know, organization with respect to the, the district level because the national is situated at Mesti and the district is at local government. There's some form of disconnect because policy is under Mesti and then implementation is under local government. And I believe that ministry, we will have some flow and some, you know, integration which will help to, to, to improve uh, uh, implementation. But at the national level, what we've done is that I can cite three projects which we've done um, very smoothly with, with LUSPA. First is the Afiena Enclave where government has an estate of let's say almost 30,000 acres, which um, because we don't have the base parts for loose parts to do the planning, what we did was to get the photogrammetry units of the Lands Commission to fly drones to capture the data, get current data for loose part. We gave that data to loose part. They developed the local plans and we funded them from our IGN. That project cost the Lands Commission almost two million dollars and we funded LUSPA to produce that. So all their stakeholder engagements, community engagements, meeting with other stakeholders was funded by Lands Commission. And we hope to recover that cost when we do allocations and uh, prospective allotees pay their premium to the Lands Commission. But we should be mindful of the fact that Lands Commission it's not a profit-making organization. By law, we, don't, we are not supposed to make profit, but we're supposed to provide service to the public and to the community. But we don't have to make losses, so we will do that to recover our cost. We have done a few other projects with LUSPA, and recently there's this um, in enclave that we also developed. Um, Lands Commission did the drone survey as well, gave it to LUSPA, they developed it, and then passed it back to Lands Commission as well. And surveyors from the examination section were the ones on the ground implementing the scheme of the local plan that LUSPA has done. You know, so there is that collaboration which is working effectively. But I believe that if the National is moved to um, local government. It will it will deepen the collaboration further, and that will help us to trickle down to the, the district level where the collaboration can be made better. But I know that in some regions there are you know good collaboration between Lands Commission and uh, and Lusba at the at the district level. So um, I just want to put this out by way of information. My last comment goes to um, the last uh, presenter, Alex, and I think that open spaces are very paramount for, you know, a, a good ecosystem when, when it comes to planning. I, I live in a community and the developer by the scheme that was given to the developer, there's supposed to be an open space. He has developed everything. All the buildings are finished. Now, after finishing all the buildings, he jumped on the open space, went back to, I don't know whether he went to this part, but he had a scheme prepared for him, ready to cut the open space into, into plots and sell. So, the, we have a strong residence association. So the, the homeowners, we came together and we said, this cannot happen. We stopped the developer, he wouldn't stop. We took him to court, placed an injunction on him. Last week, we got a judgment against him. You know, and so he has been stopped from, from, from using the place you know, for developer. And I think that 
we should all be vigilant. It, it, it behoves on um, citizens to be vigilant and make sure that, you know, these, yes, exactly, you know, these open spaces are maintained. It is not for nothing that the planner will put an open space on a, on a, on a local plan, on a scheme. It is for a purpose, you know, and therefore we should all be vigilant and make sure that we, we make sure these things are implemented. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, too.
that really uh, cut down on the peak area before you start looking for it. My, my idea is that everywhere there's green and it's vegetation, you take it because it's not much. So why limit it from the beginning? Thank you, please. I need your transmission now. <laughs> Thank you very much. My, my question goes to the first presenter. Yes, indeed, uh, Blue Spark and Lance Commission have to collaborate to be effective in making sure that uh, schemes are implemented efficiently. But you agree with me that the two agencies belong to different ministries as you presented. So has your people actually considered the medium through which they can exchange data or share data effectively for them to be able to be efficient in uh, executing what is required of them so that at least what you presented can be achieved? Thank you. Thank you for the questions. We will take answers and then come for another set of questions. So, uh, no more presenters, um, over to you, you can take the um, questions and then. Shall I go ahead and answer? Yes. Okay. I would appreciate that if anybody wants to talk, you call your name first, so that I will know who I'm addressing. But in any case, that question is directly to me. The medium of sharing, According to the Act 95, section 42 or so, 24, there is the need for the district assemblies to have this public data room. And all these local plans, when they are approved, they are supposed to be displayed at that public data room. And what I'm advocating is this. If that plan is going to be sent to the public data room for the public to come and check and observe, if that local plan is the working document that should be implemented, immediately it is at the public data room, it has become available at that district assembly. And already, because we have the technical committees, according to the NUSPA Act, where we have land commission also as a member of that technical committee, already the data sharing has occurred. As we listen to Sophia Jones, the preparation of these local plans will become very easy in the near future because providing the data which is an input for LOSPA, and LOSPA should do the reciprocity by bringing it back. There is already that data interchange. But when the data finished in the form of the local plan is hanging, we don't know where it is, which we all know that in some areas, that local plans are under lock and key by some of those people in the district assemblies. I am advocating that that layout must be further taken through technology to bring out what it means, not maps, not paper, and store in the public data room so that the district assemblies will be dealing with what it means. So the medium for when this data sharing should be happening should be in the public room if we are implementing the Act 1036 and then the Act 925. So um, maybe if Alex, I think there was a question of here. Yeah. Thank you very much for your question. Um, I want to say that um, there's no doubt on, on the importance of education wherever it is, especially in this time of um, Change. But the research we wanted to focus on how important green spaces are to the urban environment. Um, because we know 
in, for example, in the forest zones, definitely uh, the temperatures are understandable to lower than the air temperatures. And uh, research has shown that uh, there's a process called evapotranspiration, um, whereby the presence of pain areas in the urban environment, uh, this uh, vegetation is able to reduce the average temperature of the urban area. So that, that is a focus. We want to focus on the urban areas and why it is not critical that it is not just the hard surface that we need, but also the uh, greens in the urban area. Because when uh, you talk to the village engineers, um, they try to explain why we have a lot of life. They tell that there's so much hard surface. The water has to penetrate some portions of the land. But if everywhere is paid, then the water is going to rush off and it's going to go to. So the, maybe in 1985, the water that would have been absorbed by the soil now will run on the surface of the water. So um, one, one aspect, the green to help us reduce the uh, urban temperature, or another aspect to reduce also flight. So this tells us how critical green areas are to the urban environment. Um, that doesn't, I really want that to be the impression that we don't we want to separate the greens in other places of, 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 of the country of the region. Thank you very much. Um, yes. I'd like to answer uh, some of uh, the uh, question about quarks or yes and other. I want us to use the appropriate word. We can say unauthorized surveyors. The law, so far as cadastral survey is concerned, give the legal backing to official surveyors and licensed surveyors. So anybody who will be doing that demarcation of any piece of land on the ground, if you are not an official surveyor or a licensed surveyor, you are not authorized to take part in that action. And for a scheme, yes, anything that is a scheme is on paper. Okay? But immediately you physically go to the ground and put it on the ground, implementing it physically. Yes, we see that one is a layout. So I think for us to understand, if we want to stop unauthorized surveyors getting access to do demarcation, my suggestion of making sure that the local plan is generated so that you have data deposited at the public data room. It is only a license and, or an official surveyor that can submit any application for solving data in that particular section. So we can kill that particular quad surveyor that we are using. It's because of this quad surveyor that Lambert also so, authorized surveyors are the authorized people who should apply to the public data group as the new law is trying to move. Thank you. Thank you, too. Um, I think Sylvia Sani asked a question regarding um, the Lands Commission's representation on um, the Luspa board. Okay. Thank you so much. The law, the law is a special plan as 95 is very clear on the technical representation of the technical committee. It says that on the technical committee, a surveyor not below a rank as a staff surveyor. That one is clear. So the technical is a surveyor. And then when we come to the spatial, that's why it says lands commission. It did not specify. So technical is a surveyor that's supposed to represent. Uh, so we take that to mean that if they say surveyor is talking about the land surveyor and not quantity, quantity surveyor or observation or estimation. We will allow the issues basically the base maps. And also to throw more light on the membership of the technical committee and then the special planning committee. You see, the traditional councils are supposed to be there on rotational basis. But you realize that within the particular municipality, we'll be having, say, four traditional councils. So the strategy is that uh, most of the areas 
the committee has the discretion of co-opting. So they can bring all of them on board. But when it comes to voting, that is when the teacher comes in. It means that one will be represented for maybe four years, and then the next four years, another one will come on that basis, and so all of them are equally represented. So the law gives room for co-opting. So at times, at the technical committee level, if last commission wants to be there, the committee can vote that person from the last commission aside the technical uh, so, they, uh, so, they, uh, so that all of them will be able to vote. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. So we move to the next set of questions. I saw a hand up here by um, Dr. Nadide. After that, we go to Gustav and come to senior vice, and then the uh, sorry, vice that. Okay. Yeah, um, Dr. and uh, I'm happy for all these uh, presentations this afternoon. Uh, I've seen something. By the way, before I, I share what name, please? I said that, Dr. General. Okay. Before I share what I've seen in the system, I would like us to identify the role of uh, professional students in the learning division. Because we, we talk about nice souvenirs, we talk about uh, official souvenirs. But there are some official souvenirs who are neither nice or not working with the SMP. What can they also contribute? And my passion is also the identification of souvenirs in the system. If the nurse is going to work, you could see that she's a nurse, not the dress. You could see a pastor with this color. You can also see, even the country, the lawyer. You see, the system, the people in the country are very really, um, confused as to who is a surveyor. That's the problem. Recently, I got my daughter to the level, uh, up to the level, level demolished because a surveyor went to a, a relocation of the property that fell on my daughter. And that surveyor happened to be my husband. Now my driver is a surveyor. My watchman is a surveyor. Because by the way, they get a nice surveyor to work sign. So if I work and I get a nice surveyor to sign, and if they work and they get a nice surveyor to sign, then I go to the public in that. Then who is the surveyor? Now, when the case went to the court, my case, and uh, the uh, Central Regional Survey Department did the composite map. My plot is falling at 365 feet away from that man's plot, my property. The position has been okay. We are in court. We are wasting time. We are free. And the man is still insisting that that's the we are not to be my husband. It's a subject. Because it's quite similar for me. And all the work has been registered for me because somebody signed it. So, me, my passion is to appeal for the last commission authorities and uh, those with voices to actually take to and see how we can identify the professional souvenirs who are working on the nicest souvenirs and their future. If we do that, <laughs> if they do that, things can be okay because the public is I am a researcher of land conflict. I have so many papers about land conflict. I have so many researchers about land conflict. And that is one of the key factors that we can even see the situation. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mustafa Samoa. Mr. Chairman, I have a concern. We've uh, listened to a lot of presenters, laudable presentations. Each time we have seminars like this, we present, we identify issues, propose solutions, then we all go to sleep. Then the coming year, we gather here, identify solutions like uh, issues, propose solutions, we go back to sleep. Now, all these laudable presentations that are going to be, and I'm going on that all. So we have a very, very laudable presentation. And you can really see that it has really sunk in. 
That's why I want to leave this a number of questions to him. Where do we go from here? When we leave this center, where do we go from here? Do we go to sleep? So that next year, we gather here and then come and do presentations. Now, my question now goes to him. And the chairman of the division, and the chairman of the planning from the seminar planning committee, what working plan are we going to adopt? Or strategies? Or working committees that can we constitute right now? So that we can help Lands Commission or LOPSA to put something on paper, action, with timelines. So that next year, what we can do, maybe to the family, will be to have something to share. That is my concern. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you, guys. Please bear with me. I just have a few comments, not uh, actually a question. Um, I just want us to look at it in the same way as Gustav has articulated. The, there is a need for us as professionals to also understand the environment within which we make recommendations for our sector. How do we uh, the Deputy Executive Secretary of the Lands Commission has told you of the efforts that the Lands Commission is making to get the private sector to support its staff and land reform project. The reality of on the ground, as we talk about how to support how to support the Lands Commission, mainly it's a question of finance. For those of us who have worked with public service, you realize that by March, you start preparing your budget for the following year. Um, there is a process that you go through and come up with practical budgets of how much you will need for the following year. It goes to the Minister of Finance for pre-preliminary. They have say 500 million. Um, it goes there for them with all your activities planned the rest. So 500 million, then somebody is smart who knows a lot of finance, staff counseling and counseling and counseling and decides that Lands Commission will need only 20 million CDs for 2023. So we'll go and do a proper reorganization of the budget in our process. 500 million after spending a lot of sleepless nights to get a realistic budget that will The second one I want to look at is uh, this is a real issue that we have to be concerned about. And therefore, if we are saying that's what we should do this, this one, do this, do this, the public financing of the public institution itself is a problem. There has to be a very strict, I mean, serious shift or advocacy for us to be able to impress our government that these activities are necessary for the social economic development of the country and not the very perfunctory way the distance are thrown. And you see, you finish this and it goes to Parliament. Then they also sit down and say, ah, by 20 million, last year we gave you 20, 25 million and you spent only 22 million. So why do you need 20 million? And if you don't take time, there will be further slashing because Ministry of Finance for the first quarter, you will get the money. Second quarter, they will wait for towards the end of the second quarter, then they will give you something small. And then wait about the middle of the third quarter, then they give you, and then at the end of October, they tell you that, hey, look, the account is closed. So, so you may even be given the 20 million, but actually, you may not even get half of it for the year. So, Public institutions like us. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm wrong. Are they stressed? And we should understand that. The other issue that I will want to look at is sometimes 
the sheer force of political interference into the way these institutions work. I have been uh, in this system for a couple of times, just a few years, I think about 38 years. Uh, just a few years. Um, what I have seen in my ministry, given, yes, in my ministry, my former ministry, the last, last, uh, lands, and foreign, lands and natural resources, where over from 1984, when the Ghana Forest Policy was uh, uh, accepted by government, billion dollars have been invested in natural vegetation cover, especially the forest green area. Yet we see a very drastic dwindling of the forest cover. Where has the money gone? It's a big question we have to move. And it has gone on to say that for a particular political administration. It has gone on over from 1984 up to about this time. And we are facing these things. So you see that eventually when people start complaining about the dwindling of the natural resource cover, can I say it's all antecedents and the rest. This is the thing. What can we do as a very important professional institution to draw attention to this? The fact that we continue collecting money and yet there is no improvement whatsoever in the natural resource. There is a need for us to up our game as far as advocacy on this. And this brings me back to Sylvia uh, Gustav's comment. We talk very nicely here, go away, go and sleep, then we come back and come and talk about more about that. So it is something that I would want to look at. I mean, how on earth can you say? A turf war goes on between the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development and the Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology and Innovation over the location of the ministry in such a way that land use and special planning in, uh, authority is welcome. Mm -hmm. If you know from 1990 the sort of pressure that Lands Commission goes through virtually on a yearly basis as to how the rich and the powerful and those politically connected ones would turn that place into another countries. We wouldn't know. How do we strengthen ourselves in such a way that we can look at those who go in the face and tell them that God? Thank you very much. Let's be brief in our comments and then um, so that at least we can give more. I'm looking at my time, it's already two after six. And so in the next 15 minutes, I think we should be getting out of this place. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sylvia Maestro. Um, I don't know if you're going to say, as has already been said by the senior vice. Um, and I associate myself so much with it, especially about the advocacy issue. We've been too quiet as if we are afraid of somebody. Be too quiet. Uh, I think that that's also part, part of the solution. To be too quiet. Um, I think my friend uh, Sylvia Lad really put a question there, and I don't know the question was nobody should anybody ask the question. Uh, he has no answer for us. But no we should not ask him any question. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, I looked at what he presented, uh, and I know some of the issues. I've witnessed some of the issues that have been thrown out there. Uh, I work for a company that has land in the Kaswa, and somebody came onto the land, and for eight years we were litigating. This land, about uh, almost 20 acres, had all been fenced around and were in court to get 
by the time that we were through support, I said, let me do some search at the class commission. And I went to this. Part of the land had been registered in somebody's house name. Uh, and you want to look at the genesis of the problem. And I think that we should not run away from the fact most of these problems were created by us. Uh, you have a situation where somebody sits under a tree, somebody brings in a plan or whatever it is, a surveyor, something, like that, and he signs. Some record it goes into the lands uh, commission for some registration, even though it was under the peace registration before this cadastral issue came. The road not be shared with you. But we are still with this new land, right? So my concern now is why can't Uspa also give us what they have to provide to prevent us from now writing to them any time for planning bonds? Because it has become very expensive. Going for planning bonds, you have to pay a lot. And it is very boring the monitoring system. So if truly this auto photo that we produce will be shared with them, then at least what they have now, since the maps are not out, what they have they can share it with us correction to, to be able to check on it, to be able to do the revision very easily. Else this collaboration couldn't work. Let us get into that one. Let's start the sharing now. So I think this collaboration is an issue in the Thank you. Uh, I think I've not seen specific questions. It's been more of contribution. So we go to Sovia Kosi, come to Sovia Tinevi, and then Sovia. Uh, uh, Thank you. And then I'll come to you before we do. Actually, adding to the previous colleagues who have. There should be a deliberate effort that, look, I'm ring fencing or earmarking this budget for it. We have a local government development project, the urban project. Ministry of Local Government at that time decided that they will engage now SMT to produce these maps of the cities. Of course, you can't cover everything at the same time. But there was deliberate effort. So they took part of their project funds to say, I'm happy. When we finished, we sent this much back to the, uh, the ministry, of course, through the then town and country planning. If we don't make those deliberate efforts, as uh, Galaji senior vice was saying, and just go around, because nobody wants to give out anything for free. This estate locator we are talking about, even if it is CD, or pen drive, you have to make the effort, and I agree with the CEO of uh, LUSPA, that is what I'm present. But to tell them that please bring the data to us, even if it is through the email or through whatever means, there's some cost to it, and this is where I want to draw attention. They will not give it, I mean, give you the data free as we are saying. What can they continue? In the case of the LG, there was not definite effort. We may not go back there because we are told we are looking forward to the national mapping. Fine, until the national mapping comes, what can we do now? Thank you. Thank you, too. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, I want to go straight to the fact that I think as a, a professional institution, we are not encouraging all the legs in the institution. And by all the legs, I'm talking about the, those in the public sector and the private sector. And I take permission to ask all members to read from Article 36 of the Constitution. I'm emphasizing this because there seems to be some kind of a law when it comes to national development. And with your permission, let me quickly read Article 36, uh, 2. On the economic objective, that the direct, 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 directed the principles of state policy, what the nation should do. It says, the state shall, in particular, take all necessary steps to establish a sound and healthy economy 
whose underlying principles shall include B, affording ample opportunity for individual initiative and creativity in economic activities, fostering an enabling environment for a pronounced role of the private sector in the economy. And sometimes when the private sector wants to move, say, hey, wait, hey, you are too much. And listen to see, ensuring that individuals and private sectors, individual and the private sector, bear their fair share of social and national responsibilities, including responsibilities to contribute to the overall development of the country. So please, as an institution, my advocacy is that if the state says it has no funds, and we all know the state has no funds, even now it has become very critical. If we should allow under some kind of uh, uh, policy that regulates how the private sector, say survey, if there is a policy, how survey in the private sector can contribute, can take the lead, can work to also earn a living and to also help. There are so many of us who cannot get public sector employment and we want work to do. And it should not be difficult for. And then the question of uh, uh, official survey and private survey. I am of the opinion that surveyors work in teams who must be a leader who is authorized. And then ensure that those who have had training in the profession are part of your team. And that, to me, solves the problem of, uh, you know, quiet and no quiet and not so, so we can have that solved. So please, um, Elijah, now that you know the problem as well, you know, you left to the service only yesterday. It is good that you continue to tell us what you are facing. But you see, when some of us in the private sector continue to want to make the noise, it is not that we want to just make noise, but because we are about to do so, that is not waiting for us. Lupsa needs help, SFD needs help, all the needs help, and it's money that we need. It's count on the private sector, count on those of us who are also not in the public sector. And let's see how we can come together and then ensure that we offer our professional services that we can. Thank you very much. Thank you to Sylvia Jojo. Bad development is as a result of unavailable schemes. The schemes are there. The problem we have, we have is the implementation. And that's the reason why we are here. It's about getting those schemes, irrespective of how they are, implemented properly. Some years past, I visited MIM and MIM is in. The, the houses have been made, I mean, built nicely, mad houses. And that's of the scheme, years past, they put full scrap sheet that the surveyor did, but he used pen in drawing. But I think he used skill, one is to two, uh, 1250. And very neat town. Today, if you ask any surveyor, professional surveyor, to align it to our grid system, he can do that. So the issue of a land surveyor has done this plan and it's been registered and it has eaten into this and that. I think that should not be the issue. The issue here should be the proper implementation of the schemes. And that's what our team is. Our team, that's how it is. It's a proper implementation. My question goes to uh, my brother Lusta. <laughs> Some of us from where we are coming from. When there is a registration, we ask for planning comments. And at any time, response comes. The broad force on a lay out scheme, broad number that, sector number that, broad number that, it means their scheme. So, this law, section 107. Two says the district assembly shall submit to shall submit to the regional plans commission copies of the local plan within one month after the coming to force of this act. So what prevent like what is the that is what prevents loose from 
submitting copies of the local plans to the land commission. <laughs> 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 Address the chairman. <laughs> 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 Copies from the day house control to the land commission for the land registrar to work with. So I want to know what is preventing Luzma from submitting these copies to the land commission to work with. And we love them. The schemes are working government for a lot of us. So we want to know today I'm going to have the Luzma director here. What is really preventing Luzma from Submitting copies of their schemes to that commission as stipulated here. Thank you very Thank you, Sabia Jojo. So, I think. Mr. Chairman, my name is Frank Miki. I am the SND Peter Grant. Uh, respectfully, and I'm um, very reverent directly to my presentation. Already there is this collaboration between the respect and that's commission. You see the problem of this country is that we keep on making laws and laws and laws and time will come we need to have a space to write the laws. And that is a fact. These issues we are discussing came to our notice as far back as 1986 when I joined SNT. And that is for the water region in the Ashanti region, presently in the Great Akira region. So, the collaboration is, it simply says, surveyors, prepare the S-Maps, give it to the planner, now it is used by which will be the to the back. After they have finished, bring it to the surveyor for you to go the implementation. What they can do with Now we are trying to form that way service. Look, it will take one politician to just bring all this together. And I'm happy Aladdin made mention of it. If you know the hassle that person that we, some of the municipal chief executives go through, you will sympathize with some of them. You want to implement it and tell you stop. I'm sure those of you who are, who are coming from Accra, eh, between Panta Hospital, when they are coming to the township, there is a space there that was initially applied for the orthopedic center. Go there and see for yourself what is happening there. Surprisingly, a land title certificate has been issued to the family, a land which has an ER. And somebody issues a land title certificate, and when we're there waiting for these issues, a lawyer comes and then confesses with it, and everybody keeps quiet. So if we don't implement the laws, look, we will keep on every year, we will talk and 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 talk it will never work. It is the implementation of the laws, like God was said. If we don't implement the laws, we are just wasting our time. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. So we have at last three questions of the approach. Bochi, I have uh, Frederick, and I come to Joseph. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think mine is more or less and advice to all of us as professionals. In fact, after listening to what Gustav uh, said, and what Alani said, and what has been said by a lot of people, I am only to say that the root cause of what we are experiencing as professional bodies is that we vote for wrong people. <laughs> yes, because we are practicing what we call democracy. And by this governance principle, it is the voice of the elected people that counts. You can say you are a professional. In the final analysis, you will have to go to those who you have voted to parliament, those who you have voted to positions in government. And it is their voice because they, say they are the representative of the people. And so they say that, look, elections have consequences. Elections have consequences. If we say we belong to NDC, MPP, and so 
whatever happens, whoever they put or bring out, we will follow them and we will lead the professionals who have the voice, who have the intellectual capacities to tackle the problems that we send there. We will come year in, year out. We will make all the noises and nothing will be done. Because when it gets there, they don't understand what you have brought to them. And so they will go the normal lines and they are going. Which one situation do you want to be <laughs> Yeah, I don't do politics. I don't do politics. And so the, 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 the moment we realize to put some of us professionals into those positions, our problems will be answered. But if we continue the way we are continuing, I can bet you nothing is going to change. This is the advice that I have for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, yeah, actually, I'm, uh, I would like to augment what Saviache and Claudia just uh, what uh, Council and uh, we have just said. Concerning them, I would like to really uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Ambro for the submission. My, uh, my, my problem, uh, what I want to consider is the problem, the problem we are all facing now is due to discipline on the part of professionals and lack of respect for professional boundaries in this country that we have. Since my, uh, since I assume head at Bogatanga way back in 2008, this issue about the planning comment came up. And I think we are the people who have done and brought it to the extent that it's now found its way in the this power. Because now we are making plans from part to go. Instead of go to part. As uh, so we are talking right here, he was even lucky for them to even tell him that it's false in this block, this whatever it is. But in Boga, you always say it will be part of the world, the next planet to the escape. And it is now because the uh, constitution also mandates us to probably uh, adhere to a uh, 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 scheme of an area when you are registered. They are, they, are, they are now taking advantage of that clause and we keeping on writing to them for that comment is also making them not uh, interested in what put up uh, layouts. Until I came to Sudan, there was no layout that was produced for my three house day in Boga. So I think we should rather probably go the way, the different way now. We rather register the land, but when we are about to what uh, prepare we call on the commission to furnish them. Lose power of planning, planning, planning with all the registered instruments in the area. So that when you design it, probably somebody has already registered the land, you tell the person, this is why I want the road to pass. You pay him up, then you the right conversation. Then we go. We talk about this beautiful Atiapa scheme that I saw. It looks like what? Uh, the, uh, the helmet of the targeters. That is the land. So beautiful. Ask yourself, what part is the best man that was used to prepare that? It will, it's surely going to go set up on the ground where people put it in place to and they put the set it up. Not the only thing they put in what? Frames. A big one for you to set up the building. We do this uh, interacting beautifully there. And even when you look at the examination, you are coming from, from the examination section of Sony. Whatever layout of the town that is on the house, town so we put a regular number. We license a year to now go and work. They do their work and keep it in their own self. Director. I will give you a bit of this thing. We need to really be uh, apt to make sure we keep records of everything because we need a, 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 a title for any towns of it. And we are talking about the, the base, the, uh, the base map. They are supposed to be the X, Y, Z, not just X. Not just X. Uh, now we are just by finishing that we want X, Y. You see, it's about our indiscipline that is killing us and that the weak sanctioning regime for public offices. I think it's time to sit up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samir. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, um, I must uh, commend the speakers for wonderful presentations they've given us. Um, the collaboration between LUPSA and uh, LC is very, very important. But for some of us in the private sector, 
this problem we don't face. Some of us don't face this problem in the private sector. What am I saying this? Um, now who is here? That's a Shenzhen Regional Surveyor. I worked hand in hand with him on um, a resettlement project in the Trim There were fiscal planners who were working with us. The surveyor takes the lead. Money is not a problem. So senior advice, I agree with you to say money is a problem at the public sector. Because it's a private sector project, the private sector is prepared to bring the money out for the basement. So a liner is done in the area. Liner done, contours put in place, sent over to my fiscal planners. They run the design, they look up the local plan, and they bring it back to us. And then we lay it out. Then from there, we do our cadastral plans. It's approved by the director of service. So in the private sector, this, this problem we are all facing now, in the private sector, as far as I'm concerned, I've not seen case tonight. So what's happened? Is it a public sector or what? Because a PAT project is a high rank project. The government is looking at it, so it's a big emergency that happens there. There's funds for that project. So that project is going to go well. I can promise you. That project is going to go well. Fans don't have a problem. All professionals at work we will get a powerful scheme coming out. As built will be a spare the scheme. I've no doubt about it. So now the problem now is the public sector, the areas that are not controlled, the new areas that are coming. Kaswa was when I was a young boy, Kaswa was there, bush. Now Kaswa has problems. Why is Kaswa having problems? That's what shouldn't have problems. Because it's the same professionals that are running the game. All the new areas that are coming up. All the new areas that are coming up. Why are we having problems there? No scheme. Or what? So the problem for us, as so far as I'm concerned, I think there's something wrong with the public sector. The public sector needs some deliverance. <laughs> because all the problems are emanating from the public sector. So we need to find a way of trying to see how best we can resolve it. So if uh, uh, examination, uh, uh, chief director is saying discipline, I think I agree with him as well. So this is my submission. Thank you, Thank you very much. We call on Sophia to Stefanando to respond to some of the questions that he has, and then uh, we call it again. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, I'm so excited the, the, the discussion that I've generated from what we are discussing. The one question I want to ask, do we have local plans prepared already? And do we have local plans that are yet to be prepared? From the presentation from Masi Tete, I listed three things that he said are the challenges. One, improper demarcation. Two, sporadic demarcation. Three, multiple cells. We are saying collaboration, collaboration. The local plans are prepared. Is it not because of the collaboration that we have that final product as a local plan? The question is, where is the problem? Improper demarcation. So, you say your housekeeper is a surveyor. Your watchman is a surveyor. So who is the surveyor? <laughs> Listen to me. From where I'm coming from, we are all grumbling about you living. You can see. Ghana can get money from land transactions. What is happening in Nigeria? If they bring the layout out and they bring out the survey data, as I try to display, I don't have time to tell you all this is. Each become cost money. It's not the public person. It's the 
private person who is paid for that four number of beacons. The surveyor that you want must be the surveyor who can use the correct equipment to set out those plots. If you have the coordinates being set out, Doc, do you think your gate man will be able to set out the coordinates already automatically? A professional, somebody competent is the one who is going to do it. The reason why I'm talking about collaboration is that under the loose bar at 925, section 47, the law says that this local plan should be deposited at a public room. The local plan should be deposited at a public room for the people to come. My solution, the strategy I'm trying to sell to all of us as a is this. This local plan, which is paper, that's not what should be deposited there. Let dramatic engineers be able, as I show on the screen, each and every coordinate is what the individual, the public will be buying, just like your healing, you are transferring money. Funding is a problem. But if a scheme has 1,000 plus, that 1,000 plus multiplied by minimum 4, 4,000 words in it, put small money in it, 10 cities, 10 cities per people. Do you think that district assembly will not be getting money when the public is directly dealing with qualified surveyors to apply for that people? Multiple says, if this data is in the public data room, once it's issued, it's no longer available for anybody to come and apply for it. Double cell or multiple cell is strong. Am I communicating? The building permit that the district assemblies are connected is it official? It's official. I'm just introducing another thing. Or let money for the pickles too. Or let money for the plot numbers too. And the collaboration I'm talking about, it is this particular collaboration where loose part and mass commission to be doing something from these cells or these coordinates.
for his closing remarks, and that we call it a day. Wow. I have so much overwhelmed, a lot of solutions, but I'm not seeing the solution coming out. Please. The team. What are we doing? Are we coming out with a communicate when we finish from here? Okay. Then let's identify the solution. Because the problem is that they are numerous. I come back. But how do we need to solve the problem? It's what we have to go out and tell. Those outside that have had our deliberations over here, we have been able to come up with one, two, three solutions. I want to make a, an appeal. We are in Sunyani, our planet is ending. Is it possible to allow one of your local plants to be used as a pilot? Maybe it can be a new developing area to be used as a pilot. Where strictly, strictly, only coordinates will be used. You are not going to give the layout for them to just go and then demarcate the two buildings. No. You wait. Let the people, prospective buyers, come around. And you don't restrict the work to only your uh, popular surveyor that you use. Give the chance to any other local uh, professional surveyor. Provide the coordinates. You should be safe that. The reason why I'm saying this is that you find out that in the final analysis, when they are setting out with all the coordinates, the rules will come out automatically. And once you give the coordinates out, is it possible? It's an appeal. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to talk too much. I want to thank you for actually helping me to share this function to this end, which is, like I say, it's in limbo because we're not going to give this solution yet. Tomorrow we will continue. And I want to use this opportunity to thank the presenters and my brother who is also online for their research, and I hope we we'll all go back and then reflect on the things that we discuss over here. We see out the ones that are doable, the ones that we can improve, and make sure that in the final analysis is when we are living here, we come up with a comprehensive community. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for the time of the uh, thank you so much for your attention. We have a full house. This, means this topic of the presentation is so dear to our heart. And I want to thank you all for your commitment. Uh, let's observe the following announcement. Uh, from here, we are going down to where we had the cocktail party last night. Uh, we're going to take our coffee break. I'm sure most of us, that will be our dinner. And then we can get to our rooms or uh, do some socializing before we go to bed. Tomorrow morning, we are starting registration from 8.30 to 9, and then we'll come back here and continue with the next session. Um, we want to thank you once again, and then I will ask that we be on our feet as we take the closing prayer. Medical checks today to do that because the medical team is still there with us. 
let's make good use of the time we are here because from here we are going to work, 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 work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you once again. We thank you for how far you brought us. We thank you for the strength given us even to be able to sit in throughout these presentations. We thank you for the life of the presenters. We thank you for the presentations. And we ask the Lord, this should not be a talk show, but you will help us to implement the things that we discuss. Because our aim and purpose is to have our country developed to the best of our ability. Help us as professionals, O oh Lord, to play our role in the various sectors that we find ourselves. The, the generations that will come after us will look at our work and say, oh, but truth, some group of people at the particular generation left them a legacy that they are building on. We thank you and we bless you. We commit the night into your care. We ask that you will renew our strength for tomorrow's activities. That, Lord, when we are done with it all, we'll be careful to give the praise and glory unto you. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So we all move down for the cocktail, and then uh, those who play the tennis will go. Those who want to go to gym can go to the gym. Those who want to swim, you can go to the pool side. Let's try to do something before we go. Thank you, and God bless you.